this to one side, grab our plastics and crack on. So it's the uh, cabane struts that we're going to do first. Now, actually, before we do the cabane struts, it's actually going to be easier for us to uh, to do the um, uh, the little uh, rigging attachment point on the um, sort of the inside of the lower wing. So this little hole that we have here and here on either side. Hopefully we've uh, put the plastic part underneath. Um, we've also got that straw that runs through well through uh, the wing as well to, to deal with, but um, we'll uh, we'll deal with that as we progress. Um, and the parts that we need for the two um, the two little uh, attachment points for the rigging are uh, P sixteen A. And there are two of those and p16b two of as well let me get those out of the sprue and we'll uh, start the assembly process so here we go we've got our teeny tiny parts here um so our p16 a's have got a small score in them you should be able to fold them over so that they create a sort of mushroom mushroom shape Let's see if so I can see that. Let's just lie that down. Like so. We need to glue that together. Now, rather than putting glue in the area where you've got those holes, which is obviously where the rigging goes through, we're just going to put it onto that, uh, that base structure uh, below the holes. So I'm just going to pop some on either side. And then let that dry. This is the this is the difficult bit, trying to actually get rid of the the part off your finger. So obviously, it's always a bit of glue that attaches itself. There we go. Right on to the next one. As you know, I'm like any of the plastics. I pre-fold them first just to make sure that the Firstly, the score's gone through far enough. If not, I can always just run the uh, the knife through just to make sure that it folds easily. Okay, so we'll let those dry. Off you go. And then we're going to use our little uh, 16B base plates. Um, and we'll stick those through and go from there. Right, I'll be back in a sec. These little things should be dry by now. I've given them a good four or five minutes. Let's bring them together. Now I'm going to do something to these that you don't have to because we've already done it. The, these parts come from a pre-production sprue and we've um, slightly altered the, um, the push through part of this. We've taken some off the bottom just because the room within the lower wing isn't particularly big. And also we've got that um, the tube that has the um, uh, the control wires running through, and of course, what we don't want to do is restrict that in any way. And that will restrict our control wires, and our ailerons won't work very well. So we just lob off a bit of that, and then we're going to just pop that lower part plate through the bottom works very much like the uh, control horns I don't know if you can see there how it's gone through and then that will we've done it right grab my aircraft that should pop into the wing 
like so. I want to glue that, so I'm just going to extract it. Easier said than done. Oh, I might just glue it in situ. So that one's in. Let's pop the other one through. Obviously, with this being a rigging point, um, it needs to be a sturdy attachment. What you don't want is this pinging out, because then all your rigging goes slack. So, let's just pop that um, plate onto the, uh, the bottom of the rigging point, and I'm actually just going to add some glue, much like I would putting on a um, a control horn. Ooh, all the glue coming out. My hands are obviously very warm. Ah, dropped it. It's all right. Got it. Bit of glue on the forward there. Just remove that. Position it in the tweezers a little bit better. Better downward pressure. And then into the slot we go. There we go. Great. So that's now firmly in place. There's a little bit of excessive glue there, so I'm just going to use a, something on hand to wipe it off the wing surface. There we go. And on this one, well, let's give it another, let's give it another go on, on extracting it just by gentle persuasion. If it doesn't want to come, which it doesn't, I'm just going to use, I've got a little bit of um, CA here. So I'm just going to run that because that, that'll obviously be a lot thinner than the uh than the foam to foam that should actually run <laughs> make sure that it can flow just run a little down the part there we go a little bit of persuasion to get it down all of the surfaces. Okay. Make sure it's well pushed in. Brilliant. So we've now got our two attachment points on. So we can put this to one side once again and then turn our attention to the interplane struts. So on our sprue here, we've got all the P7s. So we've got uh, P7 and P7A through to D. That's this little collection down here and then our p8s as well this little co collection here basically mirror images of one another um so let's just extract all those out and uh we'll come back to you once they're uh, once they're free so here are all our p7 parts um he said and these ones as well these little once again, rigging attachment points, rather tiny, but there we go. Don't want to lose those. Right, so what I'm going to do is put this, this is the um, the starboard um, uh, um, strut together. Um, and the port strut is uh, literally a mirror image construction. So we'll we'll just go through this. And uh, any points I can, or any tips I can show you, um, will also apply uh, to the uh, the posing cabane strut. So 
this is our uh, our main part and there are a couple of scores on this there are scores um, on these two lugs here and they can be pushed uh, outwards um, not at a a 90 degree but um we can imagine this is uh, this is hitting the top wing um the strut will be at a at an angle so um just bend them out slightly uh, we can we can alter those um as we go and then we've got uh, a top piece here which bonds onto the uh, the main strut like that um, but we actually have a, a fold here too so that part at the top which inserts into the top wing and it forms a, a nice a solid attachment to it um, that folds over now I'm just going to give the score a little more cut just to make that a, an easier fold and just glue this down before we attach it to the main strut. So just transfer some glue over, let it fall apart, let that glue dry a little, and whilst that's doing, um, we can add our other attachment points. So the these other small pieces that we've got here sit on the uh, the rear side of the main strut and you will see that the ends of the the, the small part and the ends of the strut differ um, and so they should um, they're not to be glued together these bits are the where you can see the uh, the printed part that actually glues directly onto the uh, the v in the strut but you leave these two there are actually there's scores on these so you can actually bend them apart but they stay separate it's essentially you've got a, a double attachment point um, to the fuselage with those uh, with those two so what we can do add the glue to where the part attaches in this v um, don't worry about going over too much certainly not up the struts anyway because we will be gluing stuff to that, those struts uh, presently so just pop that in place so it all lines up nicely should be able to turn it over and just make sure we've uh, got it all lined up so that's in place and then we'll put the other one on we'll just bend that end tab out slightly and then just pop check dry fit always dry fitting you should if you've been watching this series or any of the uh, micro aces uh, build videos you'll know dry fitting is the way forward so let's just have a little glue uh, do. You'll notice I'm bringing these parts to the side of the board to pick up. I don't have much in the way of nails, so uh, it's easier to drag it out there. So, put this on. Go. Excellent. So, while those are drying off, let's just bring this together. Excellent. And then we can glue this to the top of the main strut on the opposite side. So we now get nice. Um, uh, detail, print detail on both sides. So I'll just run our glue and the strut. Oops. Spread it out a bit. On the big lumps. And that goes on. On go. 
those elements. Turn part, lining it up should should be an exact fit. There we go. Just bending these little tabs down a little bit more, get them out of the way. And you can actually, once it's dried, I wouldn't advise doing it right now because I've just glued it, but you can bend the part that inserts into the wing up slightly as well because obviously you're going to have these various angles playing out on the uh, off the fuselage as the wing attaches etc so let's make sure all of our ends are separated like so Went too early on that. Moved slightly, but it's back in position. So now we're going to strengthen up our struts using our carbon fibre, which is our one mil wide by 0.4 mil. Um, you should have a couple of these strips in the uh, in the kit. So the measurements of uh, each of these should be in the manual. Um, the rear one is around 34 mil. Um, the central one is 37, and the front strut is th 39. So let's see if we got it right. So 34. Just there. 37, 37. <laughs> I've lost the point of where I measured that. Try again. Now you could, to save time, um, cut two of each of these so you have set for the uh, for the second strut. So anyway, thirty nine. go so this one should sit on this rear leg here let's just check that out yep that fits nicely you'll notice in these um the parts that we've attached there are little slots for the uh um, for the carbon fiber to sit in so what i'm going to do is just apply glue to the rear side of the strut making sure that I get uh, good attachment or, or good distribution of glue so we get good attachment it doesn't matter that it's gone over the sides because we're going to be putting a sticker over the top and in fact having that extra stick there is uh, is going to help the sticker to uh, to go down into that area and stay there for longer not give up its uh, position obviously there are some stresses that the uh, the struts come under during the lifetime of the uh, of the aircraft okay so let's just check our next one yep that all looks good 
So add a little more glue to the strut. And at the center, go. My fingers, let's just get that off. It doesn't matter if you over glue onto these uh, pieces that we've stuck on either because there are stickers going over that should overlap all of that too. Let's just check. Yep, that's all good. Of course, the most pressured areas during any stress tend to be the, the top and certainly down the uh, the bottom, the joining parts of the uh, of the strut. That's where you want this sandwich of plastic, carbon fibre, and sticker to uh, to all stay together. So the more stick you have, the more likely it is. To remain stuck. Good. There we go. Right. We'll let that uh, dry off now uh, before we start applying our stickers. Well, a few minutes have passed. Oh, and I've just remembered we've got our little attachment points here rigging attachment points and you'll notice that these um, top lugs here have slots in them and these little beauties get to go through those slots now they're printed on one side and obviously unprinted on the other um, the best way to attach them is have the, the printed face facing outwards and so forwards one way backwards the other so when you look at them from either direction um, you've got the painted surface rather than the white surface um, to look at right what I'm going to do before I pop those in there so just up with its partner is I'm just going to add a small amount of glue that it can attach to once it's there so I've got it in my tweezers, white side, printed side, pop it through the slot and it should just sit there in the slot let the glue do its work and then we have a uh, an attachment point and of course with this one the uh, rigging will be pulling down on it so um, because of the way that it's shaped that should stay where it is it's putting pressure basically on the whole strut arrangement rather than just that one point so okay let's repeat that for the rear lug So, printed side facing out or towards me, pop that through the slot, let the glue do its work. So, excellent stuff. Right, let's get those stickers on. So, 
So, well, this is a sticker pack that I haven't used. Well, I've just used for, for those. Obviously, we've put the S3s, S4s, S1s, etc. on our kit. So this, I just found this lying around. Obviously, inundated with um, pre-production bits and pieces. So, we have our S13, S12, S11. Um... And I think what we have here is a little bit of a, a jumble. So um, we'll make sure that the uh, manual um, actually explains this through. So let's firstly remove our S11. There we go. So this part sits on the center strut. It'll be easier if I use some tweezers to help position it. So it should be pretty obvious where everything lies. So I've just gently applied it so far. Haven't pushed it down. Just to check position. Seems to be slightly. There's a little white line running across there. So I just need to make a little bit of an adjustment to where it's sitting. <laughs> that made no difference whatsoever. So let's well, let's just take the whole thing off. Reposition. <laughs> this is where I like to get my head right down over the uh, over the part. But obviously, doing that, I uh, I'll lose you. We will lose the image. So I'm doing it from a distance, which uh, requires a little bit more dexterity than possibly I uh, I possess. So. Let's see how we've done. Yeah, that's a bit better. So, I'm just going to press this down onto our uh, onto our strut. And what you can actually do, if you want to really um, get the stickers right down, is just run the back of your knife or any fairly solid object with an edge. Just down the sticker itself. Pressing it right down over the uh, the carbon fiber. And hopefully we have a very solid and stiff strut. There we go. So Let's see which one of our stickers now goes on the rear strut. So we've put on S11, uh, S12. Let's go. Let's let's use the the number sequence. I came up with the number sequence. So hopefully, I did it uh, with some semblance of uh, method in my madness so this is actually the uh, front facing strut I'll 
converted to using my fingers. There's always a danger with using fingers that they just get in the way, especially when they're as pudgy as mine. Right, bring me tweezers. I mean, all the clues are there as to what the position should be. But uh, just sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get it absolutely right. And as I'm putting it together... I'm regretting putting these in place. Maybe we should have left those till afterwards. But hey, it's not, it's not causing a massive problem. It's just me being a bit picky. Get rid of the glue blob here. There we go. So that sticker seems to be well and truly in place now. So we're left with S13. So it would seem I haven't uh, lost my marbles. This seems to be the sequence that works best. So S11, 12 and 13 are used on our starboard assembly, which is all of the P7 clan. And so it stands to rights that 14, S14, 15 and 16 are correct for the port strut. I don't know whether this... <laughs> Me putting stickers on is uh, more or less entertaining than watching paint dry. But it can't be, if it is more entertaining, then it can't be that much more. So, anyway, I think we got that sticker down quite, uh, quite neatly there. Let's just press it home. said you want to certainly at these junctions you want these stickers to be working as hard as they can to stop everything uh, peeling apart obviously you've got glue in there as well glue in the mix to uh, to help strengthen everything So, now I've fettled and fiddled, we have our cabane strut ready to install on the fuselage. So, what I'm going to do is exactly that. We're going to install this onto the fuselage, um, and then I shall leave you to do the port side all on your own. Right, let's get our... Fuselage back. And there are a couple of attachment points. The first one is fairly obvious. There's a little slot in the side of the fuselage just here, which you will have noticed when putting it together. And hopefully you've lined up that with the slot in the bulkhead. And 
This part, this little lug sticking up here, is the one that inserts into there. And this little lug here sits on the outside of the fuselage. That one there, and sticks to the fuselage on the outside itself. So, a bit of dry fitting. And that suggests my lug is, there we go. Everything's lined up. So that pushes in neatly to there, and that leaves this front-facing attachment point uh, to, to uh, fall directly onto our further forward bulkhead. Um, once again, the, the printed lug with the circle cut out sits on the outside of the fuselage, and the little prong sits on top of our uh, bulkhead. Part there and that's how it attaches to the fuselage very simple um, so let's add a little bit of glue well when I say a little bit not an unsubstantial amount of glue just to make sure that everything sticks down well this is obviously a physical part of the of the uh, whole structure and as such it will come under the forces on the aircraft so in it goes there on it goes there and then we just let the glue do its work. With this glue, like you do, um, if you put it on wet and then don't move it, so stop moving it, and just let it do its thing, it forms a very strong bond. So we'll just pop that to one side. And uh, rather than stop the video and go and put the second one on, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to put an interplane strut together. And so we are going to go for our, um, let's see, let's start, but so it's this side here, um, our P20 assembly. So you've got P20, P20A. And is there anything else? No, I think that's it. So let me get those two parts out and we'll start building them. Here we have our P20 and P20A. We'll just put the A to one side for a second. We have some scores, um, namely top and bottom on this part. This should allow for that top piece to, to fold over like so, and the bottom part also to fold over like so. And obviously they need to be glued into position. I'm just going to put a few extra microns through and there, so it folds more easily, more readily, and then we'll get some glue onto those surfaces to bring it all together. And once again, this part that I'm gluing together now, that sits up into the top wing, I'm securing into it. part again, let that dry off, and let's just get some glue into this return as well. I 
And you notice once again, we've got locator slots for the carbon fiber that we're going to uh, install as well. So let's just pop that. I'm just going to leave that like that. It's quite happy to, to sit there glued. So we now need to cut our carbon fiber. Um, the forward part of the V is 58 mil. Let's just check that. What was the my father say? Measure twice, check once. No, <laughs> cut once. Cut once, measure twice. Something like that. Okay. 58 and 53 for the rear. 53. Go. Smashing. Okay. Right. Let's just fold this over again, making sure it sits in the right place. We've got a couple of holes here as well that um, need to be lined up so that the rigging can be easily installed, making our life a little bit easier later on. Right, let's put the carbon fibre in. Let's just check, first of all, our front strip. That fits nicely. So let's get some glue running down. And as I said, always important, this is a structural piece, to make sure that the carbon fibre is stuck down nicely, especially top and bottom where the pressures um, on the uh, structure are greatest. Go. Let's check that all fits. So you can imagine if you do cut these incorrectly, especially if they're too long, once you've got them stuck down, or what in the process of sticking them down, it can get a little bit messy. Um, if you obviously it's fairly easy to pick them off um, because the glue won't have dried, but uh, you just get your hands covered in glue, and then everything else gets covered in glue. So it's easier to dry fit, make sure it does what it's supposed to, and then you can continue with the build and not get uh, frustrated with your efforts. Good. So, carbon fibre on. So just let that dry for a second or two, and then we will start stickering. Okay, giving it a few minutes. Now we've got our S21, S22. That's, I think that's what we want. If I've used my own rules, with, which I generally don't, um, I'll have done starboard stickers first. Oh, look, we've got a sticker that hasn't cut all the way through. Oh, that's a good opportunity for me to get my head over and do some cutting. So just going to... Why it hasn't cut all the way through, I don't know. But hopefully I've done it now. Go. So... 
This is S21 and it goes on the rear strut here. There's tweezers. It should correspond to the shape of the strut. You conform to it. A better way of putting it. Looks like we didn't avoid a split there. Let's get that down. Oh dear. Get myself into a bit of a bit of a pickle here. Looks like I've got glue on the tweezers. And that has caused a rip on the sticker on the strut itself. Which is never very good. So I'm gonna pop my sticker. Or the majority of my sticker back onto the backing paper temporarily. I'm going to clear out the glue, my tweezers. I'm going to add the diddy bit of sticker. Back on to the part, like so. Then pick up my sticker and reattach. Oh, stop me. Gum on that side as well. Probably picked up from the tweezer. Now I'm just going to attach my sticker. As if nothing had ever happened. <laughs> there we go. I've got a little bit of a white line where the uh, sticker broke, but uh, it's small enough that I'm not going to be overly concerned about it. Good. There. Situation rescued. Okay, let's go on to S22. That came off a lot easier. So, this has got a little graphic on it which should line up with the where, where the, this forward mini strut um, hits the, uh, the longer forward V. So maybe if I line those up, this is gonna, this is gonna work. Okay. we go. Nicely done. Turn it over. No white space. Fantastic. Right. Just get that sticker right down to the 
to the strip material. Fantastic. And now comes the PS de resistance. Um, and that is the, what is this, the P20A. Okay, so this actually sits right there on the opposite side, but obviously there is a little bit of a hump to go over. Now we've got the carbon fibre um, running down there. So what I'm going to do on the part that sits over the carbon fibre, I'm just going to curve it slightly in the middle so that it, uh, it hops over there. So it should literally stick on like so there we go so i'm just going to add some glue to the area that will be sitting and then we'll pop it on and it can set all of its own accord Uh, I'll just leave the glue to cure and then it uh, can be pressed together uh, so that it all sticks properly. Okay, good. So I've popped the other cabane strut on there and I've completed the um the the two interplane struts i'm going to attach the interplane struts to the wing because of course we've got to rig the entire aircraft uh, before we um before we put the top wing on therefore um, i can rig loosely um, with these struts in place and then wing goes on tighten it all up so as i've previously said the uh the strut simply installs into the one slot um, with the bottom the tiny little bottom strut um, inserting into that uh, that little forward hole cut in the uh, laser cut in the uh, the wing so that was just a dry fit so literally just put some glue on both points. Be careful uh, not to put too much on because what we don't want to do is block up those uh, those rigging holes that are there. Pop that into the slot. And then that into the forward hole. And then just leave it to dry off and then we'll get our strongest bond so ditto on the other side and then we will have finished creating and installing our struts quite a blob on that so let's just remove some of that goes the strut. There we go. You can all sort of look down the look down the line just to make sure everything's lining up. Of course there is some flexibility in the wings and uh, so backwards and forwards as well a little bit of flexibility so when it call, uh, comes to installing the top wing you should make it uh, a little easier and of course then we use the rigging to uh, to tension everything up okay struts done onto the rigging our aircraft so far struts installed um, let's do some rigging. Um, 
what we're going to require is our little rigging tool, which is uh, essentially a needle threader, um, and possibly to help us some tweezers. And of course, our rigging material that comes with the kit. Now, hopefully, um, you've pre stretched this as per the instructions and the little envelope that it comes in. Um, the reason to stretch it is to obviously get any um, slack out of it um, possible so that um, it doesn't loosen too much during its lifetime on the aircraft. Although you probably end up having to, uh, to re rig um, at some point um, if, uh, if it's had a few hard landings. But uh, mine's still going strong. It's a little bit, well, the, the, fir the first one, the first prototype, still going strong. It's a little bit slack in places, but um, not too bad. Anyway, I digress once again. So um, we rig each side separately. So um, each wing uh, just needs one um, length of, uh, of rigging. And I'm going to use around about 900 millimetres of uh, of the stuff per side so let me just cut my 900 so there's one 900 and i'll just use the rest of the we use the piece i've cut to measure the other 900 is is obviously over what we need but um, it enables us to rig it and just uh, leave it until we've got the top wing on and we can finish the job off. So let's just cut through. It's pretty, uh, pretty tough stuff. It takes a bit to uh, to get through it. So nice sharp knife. Okay, so one of those lengths I'll just put to one side for now. And the other one, we should start our rigging process. Um, the first step is to create an anchor point um, and the anchor point that we are going to create is on the first hole of our little um, uh, rigging point on the uh, the lower wing on the, the uh, sort of uh, close to the fuselage so um, and the anchor point is going to be on the first hole um, uh, the forward hole, the first forward hole. So what I'm going to do is just pop my rigging tool through there and take the end of the wire, pop it through the metal loop of the rigging tool and just pull that from the inside out through that hole, like so. There we go. And on the other end, at this end, I'm just going to create a stopper knot uh, as close to the end as possible. So we've got maximum amount of, uh, of string. So let's just pull that out as close to the end as possible. There we go. And I'm actually going to trim that already as close to the knot as I bear to go. There we go. So the knot's still in there. And not a lot of excess. Less than a millimetre, I'd say. But, uh, so let's pull that all the way through. So we've got our, our anchor point. So that's not going to come through that hole now. Um, Good. So the first uh, run we do is straight up to our um, front cabane strut up here. Um, and as you'll know, we've got a little hole through through there, a little rigging point. We just pop our tool through, thread it. So, so we've gone up to our forward point on the cabane strut, 
Um, now what we're going to do is dip down to the central V on our interplate strut. And this will go through the forward hole. There are two holes at the base. And this will go through the forward hole. So I will just pop the tool through. Hopefully we haven't got any glue in the way. Nope. And then pull our wire through. And that just reverses, goes back through the rear hole. So we just reverse the rigging tool. Through that rear hole, thread. Oh, let's lubricate the end a little. There we go. Pull that through. And that goes back up to the rear part of the Cobain strut. So let's just going to go from the outside in. So this is all pretty straightforward so far. Not a great deal uh, to think about. There we go. And then this dips down to that lower rigging point. And you actually go through the rearmost um, hole here. There are three holes in that, uh, that anchor point. And this goes, make sure you don't loop around the, uh, the piece that you've just threaded. So you go on the inside of the, uh, of the rigging part you've just threaded. And then just pull that through. There we go. So now, now it gets a little bit uh, more sophisticated. Let's just pull that through. So now this here is actually going to go on the outside of this last uh, rigging line that we did out to the uh, the interplane strut. Let's just pull that through. There we go. So that's going to go up to here, which sits on the outside of this uh, rigging run. Um, if you go on the inside, then what you get is the two rubbing together and pulling um, in the wrong direction. So uh, pulling against each other. We don't want that. Doesn't look right. Uh, you see, it isn't right. So this goes up to the rearmost point on the interplane. Pull that through. There we go. We're getting to the end of our uh, our rigging here. So that actually just goes from the rear to the front. So we'll just pop our rigging tool through. Ends getting a bit frayed now. And then this runs back down to the centre hole in the uh, lower wing point, rigging point. Um, and this means that, well, this actually goes on the outside of the run that goes from the front top cabane to the lower um, interplane. So it goes on the outside to stop it um, interfering. Um, and this is the fiddly bit. We've got to get this tool 
on the inside of this rigging point here and through that middle hole. And what I tend to do here is just bend the tip around through um, I'm not absolute 90 degrees but uh, getting there and then I'll sometimes actually just use the tweezers to guide it through bring it a bit closer so I can see what I'm doing there we go aficionados of the uh, albatross will know that this rigging point is a little bit further out than it is on the actual aircraft um, the reason that it is is exactly this um, from a rigging point of view um, it just makes sense to move it out a, a few millimeters more so now we just need to thread our needle threader like so and then pull it back through carefully there we go so there we go that is the starboard wing uh, rigged we've got a little bit more slack we can pull through there so we'll just leave that tail there for now um, until we've got the top wing on we can tighten everything up and then we'll secure that in position with uh, with some glue so that's one wing done we're going to do the other one i'm sure that that is <laughs> en enough for you uh, view your viewing um, to be able to do uh, both sides here so i'll crack on with the uh, the other side and then we can start looking at putting the top wing together the first thing we need to do uh, for the top wing is to build our spar that runs through the entire wing itself um, and that consists of some foam parts uh, V44 and two V45s and a couple of the uh, plastic parts as well um, so let me get those free of the, uh, the sheets and then we will start assembling okay here we have our parts free of their uh, their shackles and what you will have noticed while removing the two mil foam parts is that they are very very flexible and but not particularly uh, wing spar like um, but that will all change once we've got everything together um, so we've also got our plastic parts here um, they uh, obviously we've got two parts plastic three parts foam uh, but they all go together to create that span of uh, of wing um, the first thing we really need to do is bend these um, these parts that are scored uh, the plastic parts um, let's see if our score is is enough yeah that seems to be working well so this central part um, there's a little obviously there's this little part here uh, bends to three sides of the foam um, but mainly down the uh, pole spar you've got two sides covered by the foam so let's just start folding so i'll just go i'm just pinching the the score all the way down so i get a nice uh, 90 degree angle on the uh, on this plastic part and obviously that uh, creates some rigidity in itself I'm having that uh, that angle there so if I just there we go so that's that side done you'll notice I've got that uh, that part now is sitting on all three sides like so and let's just grab 
this part will do the same. See, there's no central part on this one. There's no overlap. We'll just go and create, pinch in our 90 degree angle, giving us that L shape. As I've mentioned before, with the this uh, plastic material, if you find it difficult to uh, to bend on the score, um, then you can always just run a uh, a knife gently down the score to uh, uh, to loosen it a little. Obviously, trying not to go too far and uh, cut the pieces in two. So there we go. So how we're going to form this up to start off with uh, is uh, we are going to uh, put our outer foam parts onto each of our uh, each of our plastic sections, and obviously you have these cutouts here, which are for the uh, the ribs, um, and they are to line up with the uh, with the parts as they are. You'll notice on um, you may have a little bit of a a curly bit at the end of uh, of the foam it's just the, the laser melting the foam a little bit uh, too aggressively um, so you can just nip those off just get rid of those because they're not going to form part of the structure okay so i'm going to start with i think this is the p28 so I'm actually going to line all, line, line all, line all of the, uh, all of the slots up, like so. So that's, that all seems to fit. So I'll just add some glue to where that, uh, that's going to sit. I want glue on, on both sides. I don't want a massive amount though. <coughs> Obviously you want the wing to be as, as light as possible. So use the glue reasonably sparingly, but obviously enough to hold everything together. I don't want the wing falling to pieces for obvious reasons. And then while well, we've still got some slippage in the uh, on the glue, we can pop that into place. Just a little bit. I would be surprised if you get through this without getting glue on your uh, on your fingers. So just be aware of that. Of course, it doesn't really matter if you get glue on the outside of this part. It's all going to be encased in the wing anyway. But it's nice to have a uh, nice clean build obviously so that's all in place excellent and put that to one side now i will repeat the process on our plastic part p27 and let's just once again just dry fit to check all so good so let's get glue and it doesn't matter if you go beyond where the uh, the part actually sits with the glue because obviously there is going to be um, some more of the, the foam spar um, going on there anyway so there we go nicely um, and obviously the next part is to put our central piece in so that's going to slot in to there like 
like so. So let's put our glue Here, obviously, we've got some additional sides to be gummed down. Let's pop our central part into place. Go and then obviously then marry that up to the other side like so. So let's just add the glue into the L. L for leather. And then once all this glue is dry, it actually becomes a fairly decent and rigid spar for the wing. Now at the moment, that central bit is, is obviously a little weak. If we leave that um, to glue, then that will certainly become stronger in the center there. And then once we've added the uh, the ribs in, then um, it'll become even stronger. So, make sure everything still lines up. Good. So, let's just pop that over there glue to, uh, to dry off and we can now start releasing our ribs so we actually we have an excess of ribs here um, specifically the uh, the v47 so seems we've lost one already uh, got it sorry <laughs> I was brushing off some uh, some pet hair. <laughs> God on that! Obviously, these uh, these foam parts can carry a little bit of static, and they do tend to attract anything that's uh, hanging around. Just noticing Percy hairs all over the place. So, in the usual fashion, usual microasis fashion, our ribs are actually. Um, are provided two up, which uh, in certain cases, and we've actually got, and you can see on the, um, on the spot here, the central part and these two outriggers here um, both require a, a double rib. So to create a double rib, what we do is we go down the scored line on the uh, through the center of our double rib. And you don't have to go all the way through, and you can just fold them over like so and glue them together. I just need to didn't go, didn't go far enough there. There we go. Just add some glue to what will be the inner face of each of the parts. And then up it goes. We have a double rib instantly. So I'll create another two of those and uh, I'll come back. So three double ribs created. And we can now put those into position. Our spar seems to be pretty uh, robust now. Um, and you notice the slot um, in the uh, in the rib itself is quite far back on the rib itself. And 
what I'm doing, the uh, the L, I've got the forward face of the spar um, that actually has the, uh, the, the, the full plastic um, on it and the the bare side rearward facing. Um, the reason for that is uh, obviously because the wing tapers, um, the plastic has some substantial structure, uh, whereas the uh, the foam squashes slightly, so uh, it won't hinder the uh, the tapering of the uh, of the wing. So let's pop some glue into the positions that these double ribs go in. So we've got. Our outliers here, and we've got the central part. And the other one on the what will be the port side. Let's pop that into there. Onto the centre part. Move on to our outer regions. There we go. Now we need to be able to do a, a bit of lining up here. You'll notice the foam is very malleable, flexible. So we get it all seated nicely. Lie flat on the table. Go and we'll let that dry off. And then we have our uh, doubles, but with spaces in between. And you can see those by our double slots with the little castellated piece in the center. Um, the reason for that is uh, that those slots will accommodate the uh, the tops of the uh, the um, struts. So the the uh, the doubles here um, are the uh, cabane struts, and then the outers here uh, will be the interplane struts that uh, go up into the wing and slot between the two uh, the two ribs. So we do exactly the same. Um, for one set of them, um, but for the other set, we need this shorter rib. And they actually the shorter ribs go on the uh, the inner um, uh, the inner part of the spar uh, for the cabane struts. So we only need one of these shorter ribs uh, per side. Um, but um, yeah, there's a part of the structure of the cabane strut that comes up through um, that otherwise a, a longer one would impact with, a longer rib would, uh, would, would cause some problems. So we've got a shortened one uh, to, uh, to allow for that. So quite simply, rather than uh, cutting some of the way through, on these we actually cut all the way through. There we go. So we now have two. So I shall create the uh, the rest of the ribs, and then we will install all of those too. So I've laid out how these uh, how these ribs go. Um, we've got our full ribs uh, on the uh, the outer parts here, and on the inner parts the outer rib. Are the uh, are the shortened ones, um, so we can start attaching uh, attaching the ribs as required. So just 
all the glue should just slot into place. And obviously what we want to do is maintain that slot. Um, we can we can fiddle around with these but really where they become stable is when we start attaching them to the uh, the skin of the the wing which is the one millimeter dephron so as long as we get them attached to the uh to the spar for now that um that should do us he said knocking one out already there we go there back in so on to the next so on this one uh, the inner is full the outer is the shortened rib so, outer is the shortened rib in a Full rib. There we go. So doesn't glue on the fingers. <laughs> so I'm going to carry on and do that. Um, I think you've probably got the gist of what uh, what's going on now, and uh, we'll come back once that's complete. So all the uh, the ribs are on that. It's all a bit higgledy piggledy, um, and if you're used to building with balsa, um, then uh, getting the um, the ribs and spars um, really uh, well aligned is kind of the thing that uh, that you're aiming for. Not so with this. Um, it can actually be uh, a little bit uh, wayward at the moment as you can see um, we'll bring that all uh, into line once we um, we actually put this onto the wing skin which is as I said the one millimeter Depron uh, that we use a one millimeter foam um, so what we can do is just allow as long as the the junctions here where the ribs attach are um, glued and the ribs are um, vertical in the uh, in the mount they're not kinked over to one side um, then then it's all good um, so what we need to do now is get hold of the uh, skins whilst that is uh, is drying off and uh, and start preparing them for uh, for assembly So here we have our uh, rather substantial and very colourful top wing. And on the cut side, um, not so, uh, so colourful or decorated, but with some fairly sophisticated scoring patterns on. Um, and those are going to be very important to the, uh, to the assembly. I already managed to get glue on it. <laughs> anyway. Let me get these uh, free of the sheet and we will start our preparations. Sticking with the mainly unprinted side uh, with all the scoring, the first thing that we really want to do is just release our ailerons if you are building the aircraft with aileron control. Um, there are two scores running parallel here, and what we need to do is remove the material um, that those two scores um, surround. So we just need to run the knife down each score. You can actually use a, a straight edge if you like, just to help you. Um, so just... This should remove the aileron and then there is material that I need to remove from the aileron um, that will obviously uh, allow for the hinged movement of the aileron so there we go
So there we go. That's that's the piece that comes away. That's basically waste material. We can get rid of that. Um, the aileron. And before we uh, we um, put it to one side, there is a little score um, that runs down one of the ribs here, and that just needs to be uh, to be opened up. That's where the aileron control arm is uh, is going to sit. So uh, that can be open. You can do it now or, or a little later on when uh, when we come to install the, um, the control arm. But, uh, that can go to one side, and then the other side where the uh, control arm comes through to the wing, um, there's a little um, uh, rectangular score that needs to be removed. Um, hopefully, if it's printed and cut correctly, or near correct, um, there should be a little black mark there too that'll, uh, that'll help with, uh, with the removal. So, there we go. Now, there are also scores on the other side. Um, do not remove those at the moment. Um, the reason they're not punched all the way through is so that we can start sanding a, uh, a bevel into the wing. Um, if we cut through there, then we could get into all sorts of trouble while we're, uh, we're putting that bevel in. Um, so uh, we'll leave those until, uh, until later on. So you'll notice now, and it's uh, probably worth giving it a go, that all the scores that run down here allow you to fold the wing over on itself. So you get a sort of a good idea about how it's all going to go together. So anyway, I shall uh, prepare the other wing too, and then we'll start uh, sanding our um, our wings down. So the areas that we need to sand on um, on the wing are all down this inner edge here, a nice wide um, chamfer or bevel, um, probably around about sort of five six millimeters deep. Um, but we also need to sand into the wing tips as well, both on this side and here too. But we don't want to go all the way down to the tip here because obviously we've got a graphic. Um, so we want to just take it down to just before the uh, the graphic. Otherwise, it'll just remove that graphic and that will be visible and you'll see the, uh, the white foam through. Um, so we need to do that on, on both the wings. Now, I like to use the uh, edge of the table um, to actually help with, uh, with sanding. Um, but uh, obviously, I can't show that to you. So what I did was previously, um, on the because uh, I'm, I'm building two aircraft at a time, just to make sure that I've got the techniques right, so that what I tell you is, uh, is, is as good as it can, uh, can be. Um, I uh, I videoed the uh, the last uh, the last time I sanded the wings, so let me just see if I can uh, to get up here. I've got a couple of videos to show you. Um, so uh, here we go. This is the uh, sanding on the edge of the table, and this is sanding that long um, straight all yeah. down the wing. There, you'll notice I've um, I'm, I'm using the less aggressive side. Of the sanding stick, and I'm also um, using the um, the, the uh, fingertip pressure um, to help me gauge how much material I'm taking off. Uh, obviously, what I want to do is get uh, get that to a fine point at, right at the uh, edge, but I don't want to remove too much material, um, so it all starts. Uh, falling away in clumps so hopefully that gives you a good idea of uh, of how to sand that particular um that particular way and then we've got our second technique um which is sanding the uh, the edges as you can see here i'm just sort of carefully taking material off and just moving around to the next straight edge just pointing out the uh, the graphic so I don't want to go uh, I don't want to go any further than where I am now um, and then when it comes to sanding the uh, the uh, 
curved pieces and the best way to do that I've found is to pick the part up use my fingers to support the material on the uh, the printed side and then just uh, lightly uh, sand until I've got the uh, the beveled edge that I require we've got our uh, chamfer or bevel sand it in to the edge and around here on both wings now what we need to do is before we start uh, adding in our, uh, our ribs we just need to open up these slots um, that the uh, struts will go into um, once it's assembled and we're putting the wing on so that just involves running the knife nice sharp knife down each of the, of the scores and slots like so each side you can see if uh, we'd done this before we'd sanded we'd have created quite a, a weak wing that uh, probably wouldn't have stood up to uh, all that sanding and would have creased as it was when I was sanding I managed to go over the edge here and push back and crease that a little bit but uh, that uh, that doesn't look too bad it's um it doesn't look too bad on the uh, on the printed side anyway so just need to nip the ends so that a little strip is uh, free to uh, well, free to come out. There we go. All done on that side. I just go through on this side as well. nearly done I don't know whether it's showing up particularly well on the video but the uh, the scores really do help to, to guide the knife but uh, if you are concerned that you'll waver on those scores obviously just use a straight edge to uh, to help you go right you'll notice that there are these shadow prints on the uh, underside of the upper surface um, I don't know why I put them there they really should have been down, down here but we can use them as a guide as to where our uh, our uh, ribs should sit um, now where the tip sits on the wing, it should be on the third score into the wing. And obviously we've got these slots to negotiate as well. So we want these two sitting either side of our slot here. And we want to work down the wing, and make sure that here, our ribs sit either side of the slot once again and you can see why we've uh, we've shortened the rib because we've got a little uh, um, inlet there that uh, allows part of the um, cabane strut to uh, to enter into the interior of the wing and then obviously our central rib sits one of the two should sit onto uh, onto the wing so that's how we want it and remembering to keep 
the front of each rib on that third score. Good. Right. Well, let's get that glued down. Literally just run our glue onto the underside of our spar and then along the uh, along the ribs. So it's just one side of that central rib. And go. Okay, and don't forget it's the longer part of the uh, the rib um, that uh, that points forward. So get our general positioning correct, and we can start positioning each rib. Let's just move move forward a smidge onto that third. Just literally touching that third score. Just making sure that slot is kept open and glue free. Can actually. use the tools available to us to ensure that everything is sitting where it should. Two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. It's all good. Third one. There we go. see I've got a bit of glue between the uh, the ribs there so I'm just going to pop in the bit of wire I had available to me use a bit of folded paper or something like that just to move it out of the way the slot is there we go. So those are our ribs onto the wing, all in position. And I'm going to repeat the process onto this side, like so. So we'll get all of that arranged. Good. Right, I shall be back to you once that's done. So there we have the uh, interior of our spar and rib soaked wing. And now the process is literally just folding over each section of wing onto the, uh, onto the ribs below. Um, but to do that uh, and do it Effectively, uh, we need obviously to apply a reasonable amount of glue. Um, so, I'm not going to use the um, the glue one side, then fold over, hoping to get glue onto both sides technique. I'm actually going to add glue to both sides. So, and then we're going to let it dry before actually bringing everything together. So we use that contact adhesive quality. Um, so, and I'm being fairly generous with the glue as well. I don't want the wing sort of pulling apart. So 
obviously we've got a nice deep bevel that I can use as a uh, as a contact point. We've got the beveled areas around the tip as well. And obviously our fold comes to this graphic line here, so I can actually use that as a guide. I'm, I'm staying probably a millimetre back from it on the white surface, but just applying a smear of glue there too. So when we fold over, it should really just grab and downward pressure should force everything together and it stay together too. So, um, And of course, I'm going to put some across the top of the ribs so we get good adhesion and a nice shape to consistent shape to the wing itself. And along the, a little bit along the top of the spars too. There we go. So, literally going to allow that to dry off and then fold over and then we'll do the uh, the other side of the uh, of the wing okay i've given that a good 10 minutes um let's just see that's uh, that's yep yeah, that's still a little bit tacky but um it's not squidgy so so it's just a process of folding this over making sure that i get right down the middle so even an even fold and then press down get everything You put a little bit of a, an overlap at the tip, don't worry about that because we can trim that. There we go. So that's worked out really well. We haven't got any glue squidging out of the uh, the join there and everything is stuck down really nicely make sure that everything's stuck internally as well so we maintain that really nice shape and then we can give a little attention to the uh the wing tip we can actually use all of our little techniques to burnish the material together. And as I said, if we need to make any trimming to remove some of that white area, that's not a problem. So put a little bit extra white area running at the tip there. So what I can do is just very carefully using the top wing skin as a guide, just remove that. And then I can compress it. I can even use a bit of tool. Just to bring it together. There we go. Just roll that edge over. There's plenty of glue there, so that should take nicely. Just going to use a flat surface to help that. There we go. That's all gone together really well. 
fantastic. Right. So I can now turn my attention to the other wing. So I'm just going to do a little pre-fit. So got a tiny little bit of an overlap here. So I'm going to make a a trim cut. I'm going to look at how much that overlap is. So it's about a millimeter. I'm just going to mark that. And then using my straight edge, I'm just going to make a small amount of trimming. Now I must admit I haven't done had to do this before. Um, because I've been a little more accurate with my uh, with my gluing, but it's always worth checking when you're uh, when you're building. So that's uh, that looks that looks a lot better. So that's going to come together a lot nicer centrally, just there. So anyway, I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. Um, apply the glue to all of the areas that I applied on this side and then once again we will fold over and uh, um, do all our little treatments to the uh, to the wingtip etc so I'll crack on with that come back when that's done there we go our top wing so far and actually creating it on the bench like this flat means that it's nice and even and it's it's a nice strong light uh, wing so what do we got to do now well i think the next step we really want to take is popping uh ailerons on and uh what we need for that is uh, some plastics Here we go. Some plastics. Uh, we need a little bit of carbon fibre. So there we go, just to stiffen up the ailerons themselves. Um, and we need some stickers. So there we go. Sticker pack as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, stiffen up the ailerons with some carbon fibre. So let's just move those to one side and. I need a length of carbon fiber that runs from the slot that we have um, to the outer edge, which I think is around uh, 70, 76, is it? No, 60. We've got, got the numbers around the wrong way. 67. So 67 millimeters per aileron. So let's just. I can measure it on here, can't I? It makes it easier. So, one of those. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy. fiber back to the pot and so we just need to adhere that to the leading edge of the uh, of each of the ailerons so just need to run a little bit of glue down the, uh, the front edge there just from that slot outwards I really do think this uh, foam to foam is a little more controllable than uh, than you do. And certainly, it's, uh, I know I've said it before, but it just doesn't string anywhere near as much as uh, as you do. It still does a little bit, but uh, it's uh, a lot better behaved. So. Go. Just put 
that to one side to dry. And we'll do uh, the other one. Okay, that slot looks a little bit thin. So what are we going to do? I'm going to put the back edge of the knife so I don't slice it and then just add a little pressure on the side of the knife and just run it down that slot just to open it up a little bit. The foam moves away slightly so that's that's much better. So let's do the same on this aileron too. I can do it and I've got, I've got terrible shakes. That's nothing to do with the drink. So it should be a nice match because the material is around about a millimeter thick and carbon fiber is also a millimeter across so there fantastic right while those are drying let us get our plastic parts uh p29 p30 are what we need they form a hinge for each of the uh each of the ailerons before we do actually before we free those um what we are going to do you've got this um these these slots in either side either wing um and the return material that folds over is obviously showing through just the uh at the very end of that slot what we're going to do just use a knife and just remove that material using this side as a uh, as a guide so that should just pop out there and I'm just gonna move the material away a bit a little bit of a, a release of the glue there so Pop that down. Sure it's stuck. It's better. So I've just opened up that um, that slot. Just use that side pressure to even things up. And we'll just do the other end as well. Just open that up too. This slot needs to be open to allow the uh, the aileron control arm to move through it. So all will become clear very shortly. If you haven't worked it out already. Just so there's no snagging point ready. And the arm moves through. Okay, that's great. Let's just flip over. <laughs> you notice these little, little things appear that didn't do when you were when I was putting the wing together. There we go. Right, so let's get our plastic parts. Uh, P29 and P30. The slot that runs through the middle of the part corresponds to the slots on the uh, on the wing there. So the P29 goes on what is the port side. P30 on the other side. So let's put that to one side for now. That 
that was on that side there. What I'm going to do is actually initially attach it to the aileron. You notice there's a score or a couple of scores in the middle there, and we want that to sit in the middle of the um, the gap essentially. So the score needs to sit um, just above the top of the carbon fiber that we've just stuck. So let's just add a little glue to the back of the thinner part of this hinge. Don't worry, this isn't the only hinge for the aileron. We use our traditional sticker method too. Obviously, we want the slot in that's already cut into the aileron to be exposed through that hinge, plastic hinge part. Okay, we can do the same on the other side. Of course, I extracted it. There we go. Let's make sure that slot's that slot is exposed. And there we have it. Right, whilst that is gluing, um, let us just move forward with the uh, aileron control arm, which consists of two. P31s, which are symmetrical parts. So there we go, those two there. So there are two per side. Just do this one now. And just want to apply some glue so we can stick the two together back to back. Now there are a couple of holes, um, just very small holes, in the uh, in the arm arm itself, and obviously try not to get any glue over those holes. And once again, it's going to be amazing if you manage to get these two parts together without getting glue on your fingers, so be aware. Go. So they should just fall on top of one another, those holes should uh, Cover, cover each other, so you've got a hole through each, and then let that dry too. So uh, I'll crack on and do the other one, and then we'll, uh, I'll get back to you. There, we've got the other one done. Now it's uh, an opportunity to actually glue our aileron in place. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is just glue this part of the hinge to the main wing. That's simply done the traditional way with glue. Now we want a gap um, between the 
back of the wing and the leading edge of the hinge so that it has the opportunity to move back and forth. And that needs to be probably, certainly at th this end with the carbon fibre, about half a mil. Obviously on the inside, down here it's a little bit more because of the fact that there is no carbon fibre there. Stick that there, that's fine. And then we have a range of stickers here. Excuse me, all of these should have been used. Um, but uh, this is a new sticker pack. Um, we've got our uh, parts coloured in that, uh, that you would have to. Um, whereas I think on ours, that we, had, uh, we had white parts with the part numbers on. So anyway. Just um, the, there's a slight slant on the, um, the the black line that's supposed to represent sort of the in in between or the hinge line I should say should represent the hinge line, um, and so I think the, the the ones on the right hand side they're all called they're all S twenty five but the one on the right hand side are better for the. Uh, the the right hand side of the wing as we're looking at it at the moment, which is actually the um, the port side when it's flipped over. So now there's no indication on the wing where you should put these um, inch stickers, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to show you. It's um, obviously you need them nicely spaced. And you need them to be supportive too. So let's just sorry, I'm be hunched over this. So I'm trying to do it at a safe distance so you can see. So I'm going to go um, fairly close to the edge here. Just get that line over our hinge line so there we go actually that's uh maybe a little bit too close the uh, the actual um gap itself let me just peel that back and just do that again so i'm just going to bring it up to the closer so I can see what I'm doing. So there we go, that's, that's better. That's it, I've got more of a more throw, as it were. Okay. And we continue. We've actually got three stickers to add to each aileron. So this one I'm going to bring down around about here. So sort of centrally. Like so. And the last one I'm going to get as close as far inboard as I can on the uh, on the aileron. So should be around about there. There we go. So, very good movement, and everything is secure in place and ready to uh, control. I'm just moving, I've just put the blade through the uh, the gap there, and I'm just moving the foam a little to one side as I can see it um, through that gap. There we go. That's job done. And then I shall continue on this side and see you once I've finished. Aileron's on. So 
they're all functioning well certainly hinged nicely so what we have left to do certainly in the aileron area is to attach our control arms and uh, this is quite unusual um, as a uh, as a control method um, the albatross used two types of control there was this this method um, that involved uh, control pulleys and control wires from below from the uh, from the lower wing um, and they also had a method of doing it through the upper wing as well but um, this is is probably the easier for us to mock up as you can see I've actually put the control arm into the narrow slot in the uh, the aileron itself um, and it's basically gets pushed in to that slot so that the actual sort of main body of the arm itself is buried in the uh, in the foam and then the bit sticking out going forward actually goes through the slot in the wing itself now i've got a little bit of i think it's glue sticking out there might be an extra bit of foam i'm just going to run my knife into that slot get rid of it and then the control arm you can see that the control arm actually moves through that slot like so and obviously during operation we've got two strings attached to either end and one pulls and the other pushes now i've still got that hitting against a uh, a piece of material there so we'll get that uh, get that sorted out i think probably what i'll do is reverse these are symmetrical reverse it and pop it through like so and then obviously once uh, once we're happy with the fit <laughs> that's even worse <laughs> once we're happy with the fit he said um we can glue it into place so I'm just going to remove that because there's still a lot of, what do I say, a lot. It's a lot of gummed up stuff in there. So I'm just going to get the blade in and tidy it up. There we go. That's better. So I see if that keeps catching, then the aileron is not going to have its full, full movement. So let's try that again bury it into the aileron itself and then mm, that's much better it's still rubbing a bit but i think there we go just needed a little bit of encouragement in the, in, in the direction away from the side so and once it's hooked up to the uh um, to the lines it should be fine so what we're going to do we'll fix that in place and um, we'll just add a little bit of glue to the end that's going to be buried and then pop it in and, and let it dry out so Excess glue there, just wipe that away. Encourage that. And in that little circular part in the center, you want to sort of sit on the pivot line. It's all working nicely. Okay. 
So we'll just do exactly the same thing on the other side with our other control arm. So dry pit first, just to make sure it's all, that's, that's a, a lot better. There's still a little bit of rubbing going on there. So we'll get the knife into, uh, into there and have a bit of a clear out before we, okay. We commit to gluing in. Clear, right, let's get this in place. Going in with the left hand, oh, almost ambidextrous. <laughs> Never been that before. So there we go. That's all nicely in place. We're ready for connecting up to the controls at, uh, at a later date. There we go. Fantastic. Right. Last few things to go. There's a funny old patch there. And there's a funny old patch there and that is actually where the radiator was on the albatross and on your Tyvek sheet that had the, um, the fuselage parts on you also had these two pieces as well T30 and T31 um, T30 is the top portion of the radiator and it sits on the wing like that with this uh, gray area pointing uh, forward closest to the leading edge quite simply we just apply some glue here I'm just going to put a little on the arms here too so they get stuck down. And I'm going to pop this into place. Now, before I do, I just want to say you feel that uh, you've got all the information you need now to progress with what to do on the underside I suggest you continue watching the video because there is something that you need to do that obviously will be in the manual but uh, let me just show you in your kit you hopefully got a little piece of this brown material here a little square and it's actually magnetic um, a magnetic sheet and what we're going to do is just pop that magnetic sheet on the underside in this particular position here outwards from the uh, the center of the wing in that corner there before we apply our radiator part and this little magnetic piece actually allows for the um, on the, the 3d printed parts for the engine you have a, uh, a mock-up of the cooling system as well for the engine and a little pipe 
runs up to the radiator and down from the radiator to the engine. Um, so we thought it would be a good idea if we could do that, but obviously the 3D parts sit on the hatch that's removable. So we had to make sure that the pipes could be removed too and removed relatively easily. Also, what we don't want is for the uh, the pipe itself uh, in the in the case of a uh, a hard landing we don't want the pipe actually causing problems to the uh, to the top wing and you know obviously um, damaging the structure so with a sort of a relatively weak magnetic attraction we're able to place the pipe to the top wing make it look like it's uh, channeling coolant to and from the uh, the engine and uh, hopefully it won't cause any damage um, should the uh, inevitable happen and uh, the wall is hit or the ground is approached too fast or a tree leaps out So I'm just adding some glue here to the patch where our other piece of uh, tie wreck is going. And of course it'll cover over that magnetic patch as well. Further weakening the, uh, the magnetic draw of that patch but um, that's fine because we don't need it to be particularly strong we just need it to be strong enough it's now time to attach our top wing to our fuselage and uh, you'll notice on the uh, lower part because we cut them out and we have our slots four of them and you notice that the inner ones for the cabane struts have this extra slot at right angles at uh, each end of the main slot. Um, that corresponds to the uh, little rigging holders um, that have uh, slotted into the top of the cabane struts on either side. And also you'll notice when you look through the slots, obviously you've got, you can see the spar that runs through the wing itself um, and there's a slot that runs or there's a slot in each of the tops of the struts um, that corresponds to that or hopefully corresponds to that um, the other thing we'll do before we put the top wing on is just take the uh, take the hatch off if you if you've got it on um, and make sure our rigging is uh, I haven't pulled through yet, and well, that's all fine. We'll tighten that up once the uh, once the top wing's on. Um, and uh, you just need to make sure these slots are wide enough to accept the uh, the plastic of the struts. So if they look like they're closed or they've got a little glue across them, then just using the knife just either open them out or remove the glue and that all looks, that all looks fine it's uh, worth doing it now obviously um, trying to do it when we're putting the wing on is a little more difficult so and what we can do though first is a dry fit so uh, we can check individually um, that each of these fit into its uh, allocated slot so right, let's just check each one a little you can't see anything there can you <laughs> Right, I've got one in. 
I'm not going to try and get all of them in at once. I just want to check that each one fits in, slots in where it should. I can actually use tweezers for this as well. Since the imagery here is not particularly brilliant, because uh, the wings tend to get in the way of the camera. That's that one. That one seems to go in nicely. Okay, let's just check this outer one. Well, that one slots in well. Let's just turn our attention to the other side. assistance it's getting those little uh, right angled bits in it's uh, proving a little bit difficult on this side so what I'm going to do they seem to be a little bit a little bit too far forward the actual um, parts the slots therefore too far back so on this side I'm just going to take a little out of here out of the slot just so we're not fiddling too much obviously front and back That's why it's always useful to, to dry fit these things. And let's just try again. Obviously, what uh, determines the position of the top of the strut is that spar, the location of the spar. And that's dropping in a lot easier now. Yeah. Perfect. Good. So I'll uh, just check this outer one. Leave the rigging through a little bit. Let's just check that all goes in place. Yep. Perfect. So Now it comes the point of no return. It just needs to. What I'm going to do is attach the cabane struts first. So I'm going to use the glue initially um, just on there. And what I'm going to do is just oh, use this glue for a little while. It's uh, decided to come out quick. I'm just going to add a little around those slots there and on that side too and then I'm just going to run some glue across the top and hopefully what will happen is that will get drawn down the sides a little as the uh, as the top of the strut slots into the wing. Certainly it goes. Right, slot it in on the far side first. I'm trying to avoid this. It's touching any part of the wing with the top of the strut from the slot so I've slotted that in at an angle 
and I'm just going to use tweezers to locate the other. That seems to be well and truly in. So we've got to wait for the glue to dry. Let's move our attentions to this other one. Always tell when I'm concentrating. It all goes a bit quiet. So, but the uh, the foam to foam glue tends to give us a little bit of time to to work. It's starting to get nice and tacky now, which is good. Just the right time. So. Push everything down. Everything holds firm now, it should do. And you should get that top part of the strut, the bit that's white, that should all sit in the wing. So push everything down. If you can probably see this, I'm just using the tip of the tweezers closed. Just push the, uh, the strut into that slot so it's flush. Okay, now we're just going to leave that for the glue to dry and then we can turn our attention uh, to the uh, interplane struts. Right, so our glue is dry. We're certainly holding on those uh, cabane struts. So let's look to our interplanes and get some glue in place so we can slot them in. Now here is a, a little more fiddly but uh, just going to place some glue once again on the, uh, the top of the strut. And then immediately pop that in. There we go. And same on the other side. Bring this up so you can actually see it. Place. There we go. So, with those now in, we'll let that dry off and uh, we can see what the rigging looks like tightened up.
now the uh, struts are all bedded in uh, you can actually uh, we're not going to fix this for now but what we can do is just tighten up all our struts sorry all our rigging just draw it through from the point where we attached it on the front inner hole and then just keep pulling it through go so we've got nice tight rigging it's as easy as that and we'll complete on the other side too so through there go down through there up through there And rigged. <laughs> Brilliant. So, when it comes to fixing it, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go over all of that again. But uh, now we have the top wing on the albatross. And uh, that actually wasn't too difficult at all. Next step, undercarriage. Right, and um, what we will need for our undercarriage is a combination of plastics. Let's get the mouse out of the way. Plastics, and some stickers, uh, and some carbon fibre, and also a uh, few little pieces of Tyvek. So let's just grab the struts to begin with the uh, the legs of the undercarriage so a little bit different to our uh, our other kits um, these legs are uh, are separate um, in previous kits most of the uh, most of the undercarriages are uh, an all-in-one unit um, whereas on the albatross here due to its uh, oval fuselage as much as anything else the uh the undercarriage has to slot in um to its appropriate side its given side oh a few a few tabs on here um free yet nearly 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 there we go right well uh I'll continue to get the parts out that's p17 we also need uh p18 and this bit in the middle as well uh, p19 so i'll uh, get those all out and come back to you so p17 18 and 19 we have on the bench now and all of the parts uh somewhere or another have scores on them as well the legs have a, a score on this bit here that folds over and uh, should correspond to the uh, the shape of the part that it's attached to that folds over like so and glues down so we might as well <coughs> excuse me got a frog in the throat so we might as well get this sorted now so i'm just applying glue to the bit that folds over being too sparing seeing as this is uh, a very functional part of the uh, the aircraft so bring it together and then let those fall apart let the glue go off somewhat and then we can continue on this part here there we go Right, 
I was very generous with <laughs> and I put glue over the um over one of the, the small holes which is a, a rigging hole which we'll need for later so we'll let those dry off and then we'll turn our attention to this part which essentially um is the the innards of the sort of the, the wing that sits between the two wheels um, uh, the axle goes through so there are various uh, folds and creases on this obviously we have two along the uh, the leading edge here i'm just going to uh, run the knife through through these easily fold them over there we go that's great so they fold nicely we've also got these side pieces here that stick out they fold over on one another we can glue those down so let's add our glue to either side So let's um, please insert into that slot that you can see in the undercarriage legs, just above where the uh, the axle goes through. Just fold that over to get the glue onto both surfaces, and then leave that open. Now this, these little pieces at the side here, um, the bit with the curved profile at the top um, that folds over and creates a sort of a side wall and the other tab on top folds inwards and uh, that will obviously attach itself to the uh, the corresponding side when we fold this all over um, and so we can fold that up too go and once we put push these down once the glue is a little more set than it is, we'll just fold the whole thing over on itself and just run a little glue down the, uh, the back edge there and bring the, uh, the two edges um, together like so. So we'll just let the glue dry on that for a little while. And whilst that is drying, we should be able to fold and secure on the legs. so and you'll notice you've got these little recesses here that are designed to take uh, the tip of the carbon fiber that we're going to attach so i'm just going to place my carbon fiber in there and then i'm going to cut off at an angle um, which is the angle that follows um, the top edge of the uh, um, of the, the leg uh, I'm not going to go all the way through. I'm just going to create a groove. I don't want to go all the way through because I might end up cutting through the plastic as well. So I'm just going to cut a groove there. And take it off the plastic. I can relocate the knife into the groove and then cut. Now, of course, that angle that we've got there is corresponded to on this side as well. So if I just match up my cut part, to that of the uh, remainder of the carbon fiber and then I should be able to cut an equal length with that same angle at the top which will correspond which should work for the uh, the other leg so we've got our two parts there and there so Let's bond this. What I'm going to do, as I've probably shown you with the uh, with the struts, is I'm going to run some glue down the uh, the length of the, uh, the the leg the strut. And I'm not going to be too precious about just getting it where the carbon fiber is going to sit, because the glue here will also help um, the adhesion of the sticker. Although the sticker is self-adhesive, obviously the more adhesion it gets, the 
firmer the structure. I'm going to make sure my angled cut is facing the right way and then just place that on there like so. So we'll do that this side too. Make sure I get the right side. So move all the way up. Make sure we get the angle pointing the right direction. And drop carbon fiber. There we go. So getting the excess off my fingers. So we can repeat that process for the front leg. Put that into the recess. Create a groove. And then finish the cup off. Then using the angle that we've created, we can create our reciprocal carbon fiber part. There we go. Put our carbon fiber to one side, and then we can glue the uh, the carbon fiber once again to the uh, to the leg. It's more of a shallow angle, so a little bit hard to detect, but that should do it. Excellent. Can I pull it down the leg? go. So we'll let those dry off. And in the meantime we can turn our attention to the uh, central part of the undercarriage. We'll fold our little tabs over. And then what we want to do is just bring everything together um, so that uh, it forms a, a lengthy triangle at the edge there at both sides and we'll just tack the back edge down too. So that means popping some glue just on top of those tabs that we folded over on the side walls and then just running a little glue down that back edge. There we go. And we'll fold over temporarily to transfer some glue over to the corresponding sides. And we'll just let that sit there like so until the glue is sufficiently dry and we'll bring it all together. Right, we'll let those dry for now and then we'll come back and put our stickers on. Right, let's put our little structure together. It'll be easiest if I do it on the bench and everything is nice and squared and even. It looks like it. Yeah, fantastic. 
Right. So now we can start applying our stickers to our legs. <laughs> Stuck to the stickers. Right, so we've got S17, 18, 19, and 20. Well, let's start with S17, and I'm guessing this will be clear in the uh, in the manual, but S17 is going on the uh, port side uh, leading leg. Tease it off with the knife. Now, these are always fun, as you know, if you've been watching, getting these in the right place. So, let's see what we can do. I'm going to start at this end. Where's my tweezers? Sometimes find it easier to do with tweezers, sometimes not. But uh, here we go. Excuse if you see my hair or head, forehead bobbing in the way. My crane over the part to see if I'm getting it in the right place. So let's see. I've just lightly tagged it on. Yeah, that seems fine. So um just going to lightly. Down and then I'm just going to run the uh, back edge of the knife down the side of the, the carbon fibre just to push the sticker into place. What I've found is that the sticker actually does come away slightly over time um, and uh, creates a much more uh, pleasing structure. Uh, rather than the, the, the ridged um, form that you get at the moment, but uh, sort of finds a natural position. So there we go. So good stuff. Um, so let's put on S18 now, which is the back leg of that same side, the port side. Tweezers. So I'm holding it so I can get enough material down um, before removing the uh, the tweezers themselves, because obviously the tweezers stick to some extent to the sticker as well. So I'm just holding the sticker down there whilst I remove or move the uh, the tweezers. Now I haven't stuck it down particularly. I've got a little bit of a white edge here, so I need to move the sticker inboard a little more. So I'm just going to peel it back and just gently bring it down. And it should meet the other sticker in the middle of the structure there if you've got it absolutely uh, bang on. So let's just do a little trick again with the back edge of the knife. And then I have got a little bit of an overlap here. I can actually, I can either just fold that over and put a little cut at the bottom there. And it enables the sticker to uh, to fold over that edge. And the other thing you could do is is actually just remove the sticker. If you've got a nice sharp blade, um, you can just. Uh, shave it off. But I'm not just using that, that folding over technique. And this is just using the 
the knife itself to push the sticker down. Okay, so that's one leg done. On to the next. So I'll get this stickered up and then we can move forward uh, to uh, putting the covering on our central wing. So our two legs are decorated now and we have our central part which will be sitting between the two. Um, we'll be sitting with the, uh, the our little sort of fold over um, tongues at either end. Um, will be on top uh, with the uh, hole for the axle that will run all the way through here, um, sitting below that. Um, but before we assemble these three parts together, um, we do need to put our skin onto the uh, onto this central wing. So this consists of three parts. T21, 22 and 23 um, and all combined together to uh, to produce the, the covering. So T21 is obviously the, the main um, covering element of the, uh, of the structure. But then we've got uh, T23 and T22. Uh, T22 actually helps reinforce the, the leading edge of the structure and T23 helps with uh, bringing the parts together at the, the trailing edge. So uh, T23, we actually need to score the underside um, and the underside needs to be scored um, basically down the, uh, the line um, between the, the, the blue underside and the camouflaged upper side. Um, obviously, we're not scoring on this side. We want to score on the underside. So what we need to do is just um, indicate where our scores need to go. And I'm going to do that just by putting a little cut on the, uh, on the line that we want to score through. And then turning the part over popping ruler on each of those little nicks that I've made and then using the back edge of the knife just creating a crease I'm just going to use its position there just to establish that crease and fold over so if we scored on the other side then you'd get some some separation and probably some uh, some white see, seeing or you'll see through uh, at the back there and obviously what we want this part to do um, amongst other things is to cover up any uh, um, any gaps um, in the uh, in the main material when it uh, when it comes together so what we want to do now is just um, glue that onto our main piece of covering on the underside. So literally just put a little glue down the edge and we're going to pop it. Go. It's the camouflage side, so camouflage side up. So we'll let that set. Whilst we do, right, in the bin, we need to uh, create the, the leading edge with our part here. Now, it's quite a tight radius, um, so we need quite a thin um, uh, sort of... Um, paintbrush or something like that to wrap it around. That's that's probably a little bit too thick. 
Um, in fact, actually, I've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of carbon fiber here, which is I think it's about two mil. So I'm just going to use that and just get the uh, part to sort of wrap around like so. There we are. Good. Then obviously we need to do the same to the leading edge of our part here. Obviously that leading edge is where the underside and top side meet. So I'm just going to fold the skin round that carbon fiber the rod that i've got obviously it can it can be a um i mean it could be a, a, a barbecue skewer or something like that you can use and then we're literally just going to bring those two parts together like so Requires a little bit of glue down that uh, down that curve that we've put in. Okay. I'll just put that into place. I'll just use the. Uh, rod to help the process along. So there we go. Now we'll I'll let that dry off. And then we can actually add it to the uh, the whole structure. Okay. Let's just finish off making sure this is tacked down nicely a little reinforcement piece and then we can attach the whole thing to our little carrier here so i think the uh, the idea is pretty simple here you just wrap the whole thing around and glue it down the uh the trailing edge so let us do that i'm just going to make sure that trailing edge attachment piece is well folded i'm just going to run a, a piece of steel down the back go so that will fold over nicely just making sure it's shaped properly it's all good and then uh, obviously we put to be aware of what is top and bottom because obviously our graphics on here uh, signify top and bottom so the top is uh, where the our little tabs come out of and the bottom is where we can see our hole for the uh, for the axle so it's that uh, that way round i'm just going to run a little bit of glue to hold it in place on our on the plastic just run some just across there <laughs> And on the other side too. Like so. And <laughs> little glue on that ruler, no doubt. And then just run some along the back edge here too. 
to move over a little bit, so I'm just going to wipe that away and then do our little transfer trick just to get some on the other side so that when they do come together, it all happens very quickly. We don't have to hold it in place. Okay. So, make sure our top and bottom are correct. Tabs at the top. We need to tuck that under. So, <laughs> I've folded that trailing edge far too well. Okay, let's, I'm just lifting it up a little bit. I can get the part in underneath. Go. The glue seems to be doing its work rather quickly. That's all good. And then just fold everything over. Okay, it doesn't seem to have, it seems to have got a, a double fold on the back there. Just going to pull it apart, just reassess that, make sure that's all folded over, and then back down again. <laughs> it's always a hell of a lot harder when you're doing it on camera, it would seem. Sod's law in play. That's much better. So, it seem I've got a little bit of excess material at the back here. I've obviously folded it over far too well <laughs> so i am just going to run my knife down and remove the excess okay. there well that's perfect now So there we have our little central wing all decorated up and now all we have to do is pop the tab into the slot up to the, um, the little indents that are cut into it. So it should be just a matter of pushing it through. It's quite a tight fit. But um, obviously we don't want it coming apart. Oh. <laughs> and obviously make sure the orientation is uh, is correct once again here. So obviously the, uh, the the curved edge is the leading edge, and the short um, strut is the forward facing um, undercarriage leg. That's in place, like so. Turn our attention to the other side. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm maneuvering um, the Um, the slot 
into one of those little notches first off and then that should make it easier let's just get some tweezers on there to actually then get the other part through there we go so that's all on that's all solid um, excellent stuff so now what we can do is just bend these little tabs here so that they face inwards and then we'll be ready to attach this to our fuselage well it's not it's not fuselage anymore it's almost a fully fledged aircraft isn't it with both wings on so there we go so that's ready to apply now i've just got to go and get the aircraft itself so as if by magic our plane has arrived now before we actually attach the undercarriage we're going to complete our fuselage and um, fill up this particular area here and to do that we need a little part a little tieback part t17 which should sit quite neatly in that area there all we need to do is give it a little bit of shape so it's easier to attach we just need to incorporate a curve on it and then it's just a matter of gluing it into place there are a couple of little slots in it that should correspond with the um, uh, little attachment points for the uh, for the undercarriage rigging and then just need to glue it into place right there so let's do that obviously we've got these little tabs that we can use I'm just going to bend them up slightly so that when we add pressure they uh, they push against it somewhat and let's just make sure we've got some glue on each of these so that when we bring the part into place or put the part into place it sticks quickly firmly and hopefully won't let go so we'll put a little bit in that former there and we'll also put some on the edge that's exposed front there so I'm also going to add a little glue to the corresponding sides on the part itself where it's going to come into contact with those tabs at the back and with the form at the front and also I'm just going to run a little glue on the inside where it's going to come in contact with the underside of the wing and it'll give us a little bit of purchase on that doesn't matter if it uh, doesn't um, stick firmly in that area but uh, we'll put some on there nonetheless right just going to let all of that dry off and then we'll come and pop the part on time has passed our glue is dry enough oh i should have said it's worth dry fitting to start off with i didn't <laughs> and i'm no doubt going to suffer for it so where's my where's my tools gone where's my knife gone oh dear 
It doesn't look good. I better go and find that. Got it. Right. <laughs> this is maybe one I should have done um, with a uh, with a wet glue. So I'm actually going to apply some more glue so I can get a little bit of work time in getting this all into position. Okay. That's a bit better. I'm just using the tip of the knife just to push things into place. That's good. I'm going to minimize any any gap. And also I can use it as a, a burnisher to push the part into uh, into the places it's supposed to go. I've got uh, my little tabs through there they've come through that's fine I don't have to force that and then just need to bring the front part into contact like so and then bring panel down onto the wings too. There we go, as you'll notice the tie back when you when you're using it can actually be sort of pushed and pulled in a few directions to a, to a certain extent so there we go i'm pretty happy with how that's gone on that's the last piece of the puzzle a little bit of glue there to remove later on. So now that's on, we can add our undercarriage. Obviously, getting it once again, right way around. Um, and the little tongues go into the little slots provided um, where we built our little uh, plywood mounts way back when we were constructing the uh, the internals of the. The fuselage the substructure and uh, so all we need to do now is glue these into position now I'm going to do them one side at a time so where the tongue comes into contact with the the plywood is sort of on the on the top there so we'll just add our glue onto each of the tabs check orientation that's pointing forward. And then let's just pop these in to the corresponding holes. And try not to get glue all over the place. There we go. 
Now we can, if we turn over, um, no, I was, I was gonna say, if we turn over, we can see where the tabs go, but we can't, if they're within the fuselage. So just got to trust that the glue is doing its work. Now we can add glue to these other tabs on the other side and get that all secured in. Stringy glue there, but and that now sits into position. Now it's a bit wibbly wobbly at the moment, but uh, the rigging will um, stiffen all of that up. But for now, we're just going to leave that to uh, to dry off. And then we'll start the rigging process. Now, in the kit, you should have used uh, four of your little um, securing collars. So you should have six left. If you don't, then when we rig up the undercarriage, I suggest you use the same method used in rigging the wings, which is stop a knot. Um, and then thread, and then tie off the other end, tie tight and glue. Um, but if you do have these left, then use two of them. So we need another four to hook up the ailerons, but we use two of them for this rigging process. So let me just get one out, one at a time, so I don't, don't lose uh, too many. Gosh, they are a little bit... Dinky. So, and I would hope you have some rigging wire left as well. And uh, what we're going to do is using our little um, rigging threader, is we are going to push through. Actually, before we do that, um, let's get our collar onto our rigging wire. So, literally pop the collar onto the, um, the threader. Get our rigging wire through, and then we've got our little collar on the wire. So be careful when you're picking it up because it'll shoot off the end. Um, but uh, what we need to do now is get our wire through the one rigging hole. Um, so I'll just pick that up. You can probably see that uh, there's a little hole that's above the slot um, that this central part goes through. And I'm just popping the um, the rigging tool through that. I'm going to grab the end of the wire and then get that through that like so. And then what we want to do is create a uh, a loop that goes back through our collar. So what I'm going to do is pop the rigging tool back through the collar itself and then making sure that everything goes inside the, uh, the undercarriage legs. I'm just going to pop that back through the collar. So now We've got our little loop with the collar in the center, and we can pull that tight. Be careful. I don't, what I want to do is reduce that tail as much as I can. Let me just 
just pulling that in. This is when we need things like tweezers. Just to hold on. Okay. Now I can secure that by compressing it. So, so we have a nice secure attachment point. And then I'm going to thread through our two little protruding uh, attachment points there. I'm going to thread it through the, the furthest one away from it. So I'm just going to go through the hole with the rigging tool. Thread our rigging wire through. He said, dropping it. Pulled through, and then we're literally going to take it across to the uh, the other hole next to it, and thread it through there. We'll go in opposite direction to bring it back through. And then up through to the other side of the undercarriage leg. But before we do that, we're going to pop another collar on. It needs to be on this side, the inside of the. Uh, the undercarriage leg. So let's grab another one. Go. So thread that onto our needle threader. And then pop it on. So now if I pop our needle threader through that hole, up the rigging wire on this side, drag it through. And then I'm going to do this to make things easier for me. I'm just going to cut some of the excess off go pop that to one side then just grab that collar pop the thread through it bring that in through the undercarriage legs not around and then drag that back through the collar like so there we go so it's now just a process of tightening everything so that sits nice and evenly of course at the moment the thread should move through the uh 
the, the two holes that it was secured to here. So if I if I tighten it, um, you know, I can always shift this around. Obviously, once we're happy with the, the tightness, then um, we can glue. We can add glue to stop the uh, stop the undercarriage from wiggling back and forth. So just pull that to increase the tension. And then we can lock it off by compressing our card. There we go. And then by eye we can even up the the undercarriage. And then once you're happy with the position, we can lock that in place. Uh, I'm going to use my CA glue to do that. Just to add a little blob. Let's just make sure I have a thoroughfare for the glue to go through. Make sure it's not all going to come screaming out like it just did. <laughs> um, so let's just ensure we've just got a small amount coming out. Just dab that. Onto rigging and those two attachment points. There we go. There is a little bit of excess. I just use a big piece of wire just to move it around. The um, the rigging wire is very good at absorbing the CA actually, and it stiffens the whole structure up, which is uh, which is quite good. So we now have our undercarriage fully attached now obviously we've got some excess wire that we need to to get rid of we'll we'll do that all at once when we finish off the uh, the, the rigging tidy everything up um so uh, so yeah another step accomplished and uh, now let's start building the, uh, the wheels uh, for this we're going to need uh, some uh, one mil foam some two mil foam and uh, some plastics. For those of you who have already built Microasis kits, uh, this process is very familiar. Um, there's, uh, there's nothing, I don't think, nothing different, apart from the, um, the axle, which is uh, 1.5 millimeters of carbon fiber rod, uh, rather than the uh, one millimeter carbon fiber rod we use for the 124th scale kit. So uh, there we go, that's supplied cut to length in the uh, in the box that should be a hundred mil uh, long so it's uh, it's fairly precise so try not to use it for anything else okay so let me get all these parts off the sprues and uh, then we will start the assembly process so we have our two mil parts v33s and V34s, 34s. 34s. Um, we've got our one mil um, parts as well, which have got the uh, the graphics on. Uh, they're Z13s uh, with the slots in, and Z14s. And then we've got our little plastic parts. Um, those are P24s, which are the larger ones with the graphics on, and the P24As, which are the, uh, the little ones. Now, what we're going to do is assemble this assemble each wheel onto the axle um, but we don't have to fix it to the axle the idea is um, assembly uh, in this way ensures that the uh, the wheel um, can run as true as uh, possible without uh, too much uh, wobble or wiggle um, it, uh, it's a, it's a sort of a by eye process but um, it allows you to turn the wheel as you uh, as you construct it to keep checking all I'm doing now is just sanding off the little bits of burr uh, from the uh, from the cutting process 
um, and allows us to just slot the wheel on. So there's no need to glue the wheel onto the uh, the shaft at the moment. Um, we're just going to use it to assemble. So the first part to go on is our P24 plastics, which sits. This is basically the the, the back part of the uh, of the wheel, and it should be a nice tight fit because the axle axle uh, rotates with the uh, with the, the the wheel itself. So that goes on there. We can apply a little bit of glue to the uh, the shiny side or the unprinted side. And the great thing about having that rod there is that we can hold the glue still and uh, spin the part to apply the glue, which works well. So the next part that goes on is the back of the wheel, um, which is our uh, what was this that Z14? So that uh, that pops through, and obviously. Let them glue together. What I tend to do because I, I quite like the uh, the quick nature of uh, of the uh, bond that you get when you let the glue dry somewhat. So I just pull them apart uh, once we've got glue on both parts and let them dry off. Next part to go on is uh, uh, V thirty three, and because this sits inside the uh, um, the the circumference of the the uh, the one little part I'm going to actually apply glue to the back of um, the floating part so let's just add a it's always worth being relatively generous with your uh, with your glue for the wheels because obviously they do go through quite a lot of uh, work in their life so just pop that together, transfer the glue over, give it a little bit of a twist around, and then pull it apart, let that glue dry off. The, uh, the back part has now come into contact. I'll, I'll leave that, um, the plastic part, to, to uh, finish its bond. Um, the next part that we put on is the uh, V34, the smaller part. It'll help support the uh, the cone. So we'll pop that on. So once again, because it's within the circumference of the V33 part, I'll apply the glue here so we don't get any excess. And I'm avoiding putting it near the uh, the hole at the moment because I don't want the uh, the wheel to stick on at this present time. So on it goes. Transfer, and then pull apart. And as you see, I've also nudged the larger V33 part down onto the uh, the back of the wheel, so it's now stuck. So, and the last part before we start doing uh, any scoring is our smaller plastic part, um, which uh, once again because it's within the circumference of the part it's going on to, I'll just add a little bit of glue to it. There we go. There it goes. Just use the tweezers to push that all down together and I'm just going to leave that like that and what I can do now is just make sure that it's running fairly true just by holding the axle and rotating it seeing if I've got any wobble I'm pretty happy with that that's fine of course it's the the plastic bits at either end um, that really hold position on the axle the foam itself obviously um, can collapse somewhat under pressure um, so uh, those plastic parts play a, uh, a vital role in the uh, in keeping the wheel true on the aircraft time after time landing after landing takeoff after takeoff right so that's that wheel done um, to the point of not having to do any scoring 
and now we need to think about assembling the front part of the the uh, the, the hub cap if you like um, and uh, on this part in your instructions um, you will have a scoring guide which you can lay your uh, your wheel part onto um, and it will show you where your scores go but I'm going to do this freehand I'll probably screw it up even though I've probably done this a few hundred times um, but it should yours should come out pretty much well they'll probably come out better than this as soon as I'm doing this freehand so So, while I'm scoring this, I'll, uh, I'll put you on pause so you don't have to watch me screw it up completely. So, once it's all scored, what I tend to do is then make sure that each of those scores actually bends. So I essentially wrap the whole thing around making sure each score is folded. There we go, and then the two edges, once you've uh, folded all the scores, those two edges of the, the V shape should come together and hold your uh, your cone shape see there so what i'm going to do now is just lift that edge backwards and apply a little uh, little of the glue just down the edge there we go and then bring those two edges together and then let it fall apart put it to one side let it dry and then I'll uh, bring it back together so in the meantime what I can do um, is either crack on and score that or assemble the, uh, the the other wheel to the point of putting the uh, the hub cap on so uh, let me do both of those and come back to you There we go. I've also finished my coffee. Um, so, wheels are on. A bit like railway carriage wheels at the moment. Um, right. We've got our glue on both of these, uh, these parts here. So, what I should be able to do is now just bring that V together. And it should just hold nicely for us. There we go, and just do the other one too. This is why I like the uh, the, the grab function of of this glue that we use. The um, the Yuhu Paul does it as well. The Yuhu Paul would do exactly the same job here, um, but I'm using obviously the uh, the foam to foam. Okay, so now we need to put our hubs onto the wheels themselves. They literally sit on the um, the, the, the part that we've created structure um, and obviously the um, carbon fiber the axle should just go through the wheel itself and so what we're going to do now is add glue to the edge of each of these discs so and I'm going to be very generous with the glue here um, on the edge on both counts so and then pop our hub on Make sure it all lines up nicely and then once again remove it let it dry off 
same again on this side. Good bead. What's the word? A bead of glue around each of the discs. A bit of a blockage. <laughs> and oh dear, what's all this coming out? Oh, there we go, must be some old glue. Very peculiar. That pot of glue just gave birth. <laughs> Peculiar. So let's just pop that on. Make sure let's get rid of that. It looks like I've got some sort of insect lava. <laughs> Very peculiar. Um, okay, and then just pop that off, let it dry. Okay, so Let's let a, a little bit of time elapse um, before I apply those back onto uh, onto the wheels and uh, and finish off. Um, so I'll uh, pop you on pause and go and grab myself another coffee. There we go, a fresh brew. Cheers. Oh, that's hot. Ooh, the good stuff. Right. Well, let's get these hubs on. So. Doesn't really matter what uh, what side we put each one of them on. Just get that axle through that hole, and then just bring some pressure to bear and squeeze the wheel together. There we go. Pretty solid wheel. We'll go the other side. axles through and just bring it all together do a quick spin just to make sure it's running pretty true and then I'm going to leave it although that's not glued to the uh, the axle at the moment I'm just going to leave it on there so that everything has a chance to set um, under normal conditions, um, I would usually leave this probably overnight um, just to make sure the glue is completely set and the bonds are doing the uh, doing their thing. The next step for this um, is to uh, apply the um, the tires, which are supplied in the kit, um, but they put a little pressure on the um, on the structure itself and if the glue isn't set well enough then um, that pressure can actually start pulling the uh, um, the, the wheel apart so um, we're going to leave that to, uh, to to dry so that um, we get a nice solid wheel once the uh, once the tires are on excellent well that about concludes the, um, the assembly of the undercarriage for our uh, for our albatross um, all that's left is to um, pop the axle through the hole then through the wing the little central wing itself and then out the other side which can take a little obviously a little bit of fiddling but there we go comes through and then you've got enough room on the other side to pop your wheel there we go and it should be what you can do prior to doing this take that off again is just bend these the, the tips of your undercarriage in slightly so I mean, you can you can use some, some tools if you wish. So a uh, pair of pliers. I've got some. There we go. Probably make it easier. 
just rip them and just turn them in like so. And then that just gives you a little extra room. But you want the um you don't want the wheels wobbling back and forth. <laughs> it's a it's a magic trick, isn't it? Let's try, try it from the other way. And obviously, with the uh, with the design, you've got this um, plastic part that sits on the outside of the wheel, and that touches the uh, the inner plastic part. Um, both of those are um, fairly low friction, and they uh, obviously there's no glue involved. So uh, there we go. The the axle itself. Definitely won't need any trimming. It is exactly uh, right so that the, the tips of the axle just protrude, just sort of almost sit flush with the uh, the ends of those um, those cones on the hubs themselves. So that's our wheels on. Bar the um, uh, bar the uh, the tires. Um, I suggest you probably fit the tires on before you uh, actually assemble the, uh, the the wheels onto the uh, the undercarriage though um, the reason for this is that it's actually easier um, to pop the tire on from the inside out I'm just looking around to see if I've got any tires sitting around I'll just go and grab some there that didn't take long okay so as i said actually popping these tires on it's easier because the diameter of the um of the inner part of the wheel is slightly smaller than that of the outer it's easier just to pop them onto the rim like so you shouldn't need to glue them either they should just sit into the channel that has been created between the one and uh, two mil foam pieces so uh, there we go pop the other one on too so once again as i said from the uh, from behind the wheel up over the lip and that should just sit there without the need for any glue and then we can let's go through this way again we had some success <laughs> oh, see it there we go now I would suggest uh, at this point we can glue the wheels on so quite simply just put a little blob of glue on the end there and then as we push the yeah, the wheel on it'll draw it through the uh, through the hole in the wheel there we go and it's on so and then once that's dried I'll take this side off and do exactly the same glue that into place great so she got legs let's hope she knows how to use them let's open this and hopefully yay within here we've got our 3D printed parts. Uh, 
they are obviously still on the uh, frame they were printed on. And what we need to do is extract the parts from the uh, the frame itself. These little um, these little supports um, they uh, they actually support the material as it's printed. They're absolutely necessary. Um, they're not they're not sort of like uh, injector pins or anything like that. The, the technology works a little bit different from injection molding, but um, they um, the actual surface area. Well, the, the amount of material that's connected is, is tiny, so they should all come off pretty easily. Um, obviously, these parts are relatively delicate in certain areas, especially before assembly. A little bit stronger once everything is assembled, but you've got things like the little uh, handle here um, that uh, protrude and are on a fairly small stalk. Um, so just be careful when you're uh, handling uh, these parts. Don't obviously don't try not to drop them. Um, obviously you've got things like the sights on the uh, on the machine guns as well. They're, they're pretty delicate. So, uh, um, but what I'll show you is how to detach the parts from the um, the well, I want to say the sprue, but the, uh, the sort of a, the framework. Um, all you'll really need is maybe a you know a small pair of pliers or snips um and it's literally just about breaking the uh the part away breaking the support away from the part and they do come really easily um it can be a little sort of uh laborious to do but um Obviously, you're getting a fabulously detailed part here. We've got a fabulously detailed part um, for your fabulously detailed aircraft. So it's worth just taking the time, removing each of the support pins. And once you've got the majority of them off, so here I'm removing the exhaust. Then the rest should just break away when you pull. And if you've got a few little excess bits, you can either just pick them off or using a knife, you can just slice them off. And then if you've got a few sort of bits of excess, you just either take them off with a uh, with a knife, or you can carefully sand them down. And sort of you know treat it as a it's a it's a, obviously a resin, but um, it's fairly lightweight, which is good. Obviously, if you've got a micro radio controlled model. sanding you can prep your part ready for assembly so it's just now a, a matter of continuing to remove these little pins from the part itself methodically working through to make sure it's free. And then of course, if you've ever been into plastic modeling, the next stage after we've uh, got parts off is um, you get to paint them, which is, uh, I've always found a lot of fun. The great thing is because it's so detailed you can you can make as much or as little of the uh, the painting process as you like really. Um, you can add your weathering, there's lots of 
reference material online as to uh, what these uh, what these engines look like, both in a sort of factory fresh condition and also after many many hours of uh, of use. Right, just break away some of the base as well. You haven't done this before actually it is quite fun to do it's a, it's a little bit destructive <laughs> in a gentle way you get to uh, break off all these pins so there we go Let's give that base a little bit of a sand to make sure it's nice and flat Everything else looks good, and you'll see some of the detail here is amazing. You know, you've got the the, the coil springs. Um, you can you can actually, if you've if you've got the eyesight for it, you can actually see that uh, there is a, uh, a coil spring represented in the uh, in the print. So absolutely incredible. So okay, well, I think you've probably got a good idea of. Uh, of how to uh, to to get these parts off their uh, um, the, the the building material. Um, so I'll continue with it and come back once I've got these uh, these parts free. So here we have uh, the parts off the uh, the three D printed sprue. Um, we've got our sort of main. Um, top of the cylinders um, obviously all of this is in the uh, in the manual as well um, you've got uh, the the top of the engine as well with uh, all of the detail of that and this fits there are there are a couple of um, prongs on the top of each cylinder that locate into holes that you'll see on the underside of uh, of this top piece here and they literally sit like that and you should get those little the the little rocker arms um, should also sit bang on top of each of the uh, the springs there for the uh, for the valves like so and then we've got our various pipes and we've got these two mirror image pipes here they sit with that little down pipe um, sort of closest into the uh, the center like so and of course we'll glue all of this together but we'll do that once it's uh, once we've got it all painted so they sit like that and then the exhaust pipe Rather, rather elegant exhaust pipe, I should say, sits uh, sits like so. So, um, what we need to do now is get this all painted. Uh, there should be reference in the uh, the manual itself to the various colours. Um, as I said, there are there's reference uh, available online um, to paint this and weather it in all sorts of uh, different ways. Um, but we, I'll just I'll just do the basics. So the uh, the cylinders here, all of this is going to be painted in uh, in a, uh, black. Um, the pipe work here, I'm going to do uh, in silver. The uh, the top part of the, uh, the the engine manifold, I will uh, do that all in silver as well. There are a few little pieces here. That little handle there, the uh, the handle um, from the reference photos that I've seen. Is made of wood so I'll paint that brown and this part here up front um, this uh, this is actually a, uh, a brass color so I'll paint that uh, that brass as well um, these this pipe works also going to be painted black um, this I will attempt to uh, create a sort of a, a rust color 
on it. And uh, the machine guns themselves, I will be painting a black too. Um, I then might get uh, a little bit fancy and uh, hark back to the days that I used to build plastic models and, uh, and put a little bit of uh, dry brushing on it as well, of silver, just to sort of highlight uh, the uh, certain, certain areas of the, of the part itself. So uh, I'll crack on with that. Oh, you've got the, um, the, this little part here as well. This is the bit that sits up um, under the wing and uh, it's got a little, um, a little pocket there for the magnet to sit in. And uh, these are the, this is the pipe work that uh, extends from the engine itself up to the, uh, the, the top wing. So we'll put that together as well because we've got a, a few other pieces that we need to create from uh, other, other components in the kit um, to, uh, to complete that. So I'll get cracking on uh, painting that. I'm not going to show I'm not going to show you how to paint. I think you'll uh, the, the vast majority of uh, people. Uh, watching this video should be able to uh, to paint. It, well, if if you can't, I doubt whether you got this far in the video anyway. But uh, but there we go. <laughs> Great. I'll crack on, and we'll uh, we'll come back when it's all painted. As if by magic, I've managed to paint all the parts. Um, so I've stuck with the uh, the color scheme that I suggested. We've got a a rust color for the exhaust and uh, black for the machine guns and some of the pipe work and then um, silver and uh, black and silver for the uh, the, the top of the uh, top of the motor and uh, yeah silver and uh, a few little details on the um, on the top part of the uh, the engine the manifold um, so yeah we've got a little sort of detail here the handle I painted a sort of a light brown or I don't know, more of an orangey brown. I've got a, a sort of a, a brass effect on there that I actually did by mixing some um, some, some paints. But if you do have obviously a, a metallic brass colour, then uh, then obviously add it in there. I've also done a little bit of weathering um, on the silver parts. I've also put a wash of a sort of a, a mix of brown and and black um, that just seeps into the. Uh, some of the, the crevices and uh, uh, detail to, to highlight that. And I've also done a dry brush of silver on the machine guns and the, uh, the top of the cylinders as well, which just brings out the, um, the, the springs and some of the, the raised detail. Um, and uh, on the machine guns, some of the, uh, um, the mechanism um, that sits on the outside and and highlights some of the uh, or the, the the holes the vents in the uh, the uh, machine gun barrel. So uh, so that's that's the uh, that's all the parts painted. And now obviously we need to assemble them onto our uh, hatch, the uh, the nose piece that we assembled. Um, earlier in the build. So um, this occurs by firstly assembling some of these parts before we add them to the uh, to the hatch itself. So let's just pop that down and we need to put our manifold onto uh, cylinders, make sure we get it all lined up appropriately. So, I'm just dry fitting at the moment. Um, this is such a good friction fit. I'm just going to leave that as is for now. I don't think that's going to come off in a hurry. Um, but I will actually glue on the uh, the other parts. So uh, for that, I could use the um, the foam to foam. Um, that would uh, that would be pretty effective. 
um, but obviously this isn't foam. Um, so I'm actually going to use my um, CA glue. So let's just get out. Good, we've got. So I'm just going to add a couple of dots. This isn't a particularly fast acting CA glue, but uh, all of these parts should friction fit pretty well anyway. So these are our little pipes. The um, the dry brushing has also picked out some of the other details I've just noticed there, which, uh, which is good. Um, dry brushing, if you haven't come across the technique, is basically getting your, your paintbrush and getting a, a very small amount of whatever colour you're dry brushing. Um, in this instance, it was silver, but it could be... Uh, a, a sort of a white or a cream or something like that and uh, then essentially wiping off the vast majority of the paint and tend to rather than go for it straight away you'll just brush something else to to make sure you are getting it almost dusting and then you just wipe that brush over the uh, over the part and hopefully any highlighted areas will uh, pick up some of that very um, small amount of paint that you've got on the uh, on the paintbrush so put our pipes in place and we'll just turn around and add our exhaust there we go Just put that into place like so. If you wanted to do this factory fresh, of course, the uh, the exhaust pipe wouldn't be uh, rusted initially. Um, it would be uh, obviously constructed of a, uh, a mild steel. So you could, in fact, I've just noticed I've left the uh, the end there. Too much coffee. <laughs> I've left the end there um, unpainted uh, because obviously I wanted to put some um, some black in there to make it look like it's hollow. And obviously we can do a little bit of uh, um, sooting around the, uh, the the tip of the exhaust as well. So um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do that at a at a later stage. But we'll just let the uh, the CA glue dry on that, and uh, we'll come back and mount it onto the uh, onto the hatch. See, whilst we're here, I'll just uh, do the paintwork on that uh, on the tip of the exhaust. I've got my paintbrush here with a little bit of uh, paint I've poured out. I use um, I use these little uh, Vallejo or Vallejo, or uh, but uh, they come in a little sort of squeezy pot, um, and uh, I find that easier to use. But obviously, um, acrylics as well, acrylic paint brilliant on this um on this uh resin so i've just uh, i just want to add black into the interior like so and just make sure i've got everything covered there we go and then i want to just almost as i mentioned before dry brush um some soot onto the uh the tip but uh this this uh obviously would probably require a little more paint than a normal dry brush would so just going to it's a good uh, good way of practicing on the underside which won't be seen as much Just requires a bit of patience and time just to 
add the amount of weathering, I guess it's called. No, this is sooting. <laughs> I'm just continuing to do that. Just sort of blend it in. Make it look sort of smoky. Uh, we do that or do. So I'm quite happy with that. Maybe a little bit too much for what it should be, but extra there. There we go. Clean the paintbrush. The great thing, of course, about uh, acrylics is uh, just use water to clean the brush. Perfect. Right. Well, the uh, the the glue is pretty much set now. I think um, this um, part that's going to hook up to the wing we'll just put to one side for now. Um, we'll uh, assemble that a little bit later on once the uh, this is in situ. Um, and we can test fit this part. So we want it as far forward as possible. And one of the little down pipes um, from our pipe assembly on the side of the uh, the engine um, should um, be just forward of the central um, former here, where it says top on the. Uh, on the plywood. Um, that should be just uh, forward. So it means pushing this engine right to the front and it should actually almost wedge it in place. And then what we want to do is get the engine central on the plywood center spar and then we have our engine in place. Obviously, we want to glue that um, as it will flex around otherwise. So good dry fit there. Um, then we can just add some glue to the uh, to the base here. I'm going to use the foam to foam for this because it's uh, it's flexible as much as anything. It's safe to use with the uh, with the resin of the 3D print. And of course, um, it can be dissolved as well. So um, you can obviously remove the uh, the motor should you wish. So let's just pop that in place. Go. Let's get it central on the plywood. Fabulous. So that's in place. We can now put our machine guns into place as well. Now, the, the machine gun itself, there's a little uh, collar right at the start of the barrel. And under that collar, you've got a uh, uh, rectangle um, that's, um, that's got a, uh, uh, a hole through it, a rectangular hole. That should actually sit um, on top of the... Uh, there's a, a sort of a little protrusion on the rearmost former of the hatch. Um, and then you've got these uh, these sort of little uh, tongues that come up that should go into the larger oblong hole. Now, both machine guns are the same, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. But uh, you just pop that on and then push those tongues right down then you should get the right angle for the uh, for the machine gun itself don't forget the um uh, the hatch itself uh, actually it, it's not flat on the aircraft it actually slopes downwards so you will see the machine gun is sort of slightly angled up 
So once again, I'm just dry fitting these just to make sure everything is uh, sitting in place. I don't need to trim anything or so that all looks good. They're both sitting the same angle and uh, up really starts to look absolutely fantastic with regards to uh, to detail right let's just pop these off add a little glue it doesn't need to be a massive amount as they uh, friction fit quite well just a bit of glue on every point it two parts come into contact. And pop them back on. forward. Fantastic. Okay. Well, a few more things to do um, to this to, uh, to complete it. Um, firstly, um, we can cover over the, uh, the machine guns and the actual aircraft itself. They have this plate that sits above. This is T29 of our Tyvek parts. So we'll just get that out of the, uh, the sheet. And this is scored down the middle because we're actually just going to fold it in on itself like so and glue the two parts together. And then we're going to attach that over the uh, over the machine guns. So let's just add some glue. Don't forget with Tyvek, we don't want to leave any pockets or gaps. So getting the glue um, thinly covered over the whole part of the surface is the uh, the best way forward. Just pop it down like so. Just going to use a knife, just the package of the knife, just to make sure that everything is stuck down. Go. And then this sits over the whole operation. believe like that <laughs> I'll need to check this or is it or is it that way around no, I don't think it's that way around let me just go and have a look at my reference so it is that way around so you've got this elongated part of the uh, the plywood that sits at the uh, the top of the um, line of the machine guns just just below um, and then you've got this part coming back here. You've got the little tongue here at the end. And what we want to do is just place this um, so that it's just um, back from that tongue. So it's allowing that to, uh, to protrude. And then the rest just sticks to the um, top. The top of the plywood. So let's just add a little glue on the top of the plywood. And that's what we are going to stick this part to. So 
with the uh, with the riveted graphic upwards um, and then apply it to and you'll notice that the plywood does slope down slightly towards the back so we'll need to make sure that this sticks to that it might not do immediately i'll just leave that part there and then once the glue is uh, feeling a little more tacky um, we can we can just pop that down into place right the last part of this uh, this build um, involves our uh, little part that um, uh, that sits up into the wing um, that's actually part of the pipe work for the uh, the cooling system on the uh, on the aircraft engine itself obviously it's not the real cooling system um, but for that i've got a brand new sheet of, uh, of uh, stickers here um we've got s30 and s31 and also within the kit itself you should have a tube so um that tube is should fit onto these pipes themselves and the stickers are what wraps around the uh the pipes um to uh, to color them you could if you wanted to paint the pipes um rather than use the stickers um, but the stickers are rather good at giving you the correct length for each of the pipes so let me just grab sticker now if you pop the sticker onto the tube as squarely as possible and then carefully wrap the sticker around the tube so that it's decorating it you've then got a point that the uh, sticker goes to that gives you the actual length that's required now there might be some trimming depending on any variations that have gone on during the build um, to the geometry of the uh, of the aircraft but uh, there's one Let's do the other. So this is S31 that I'm using. So I'll just wrap that around the tube and cut off at the point where the sticker ends. And I'm going to pop that into the engine just there. There we go. So if we then completely assemble these parts, there we go. We now have our tubes in place too. I'm probably going to paint my tubes because the silver that I've used um, I've washed as well with uh, with a sort of a darker wash um, and the the uh, difference in color is <laughs> is quite obvious so um, so maybe at a later date I'll uh, I'll paint those too. Right we need to put a little um, magnet uh, four mil by one mil magnet into the top of this uh, 3d printed part here so i'll just go and grab a magnet and we'll put that in place right magnet obtained and that should just 
slot into the hole there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't because it's a three mil hole. So let me just go and get a three millimeter magnet. Right. Let's try again. So I'm not going to dry fit this now um, because I probably won't be able to. Well, I would be able to get it out, wouldn't I? I'd just have to put something metal on it. But, uh, just pop a little bit of glue there. This is the magnet that's going to uh, be okay. um, sitting up. Uh, against that little magnetic patch we put into the wing. So, there we go. And now it's worth dry fitting this. Before we glue our pipes in place, if we dry fit the, uh, the hatch, just to make sure that those pipes are the correct length for our build, if we need to make any adjustments. So, we'll grab the aircraft, pop our hatch on, just see what it looks to be. That looks to have worked quite well actually that seems to be bang on the patch sitting at the right angle just get the uh, tweezers just to just to check but that that seems to be uh, that seems to be pretty good. Hmm, maybe the position it's in. I'm just looking. I don't know whether you can see that. Maybe a little bit too far back. No, that seems to be that seems to be pretty good. I'm happy with that. Right. It also. It's worth taking a look at um, whilst we've got it here just because it uh, certainly elevates the aircraft um, once all the uh, once all the gubbins is on there looks absolutely yeah absolutely amazing right Pop that to one side. We'll just glue the uh, the tubes in place. So I've just add a little bit of uh, foam to foam. Go. Go. Access there. Just put some glue on this two. Obviously you don't need don't need a great deal. Go. Fantastic. Right. I can set that aside and then we can add the few other details that are required on the um, 
aircraft itself. So um, we have a, uh, a a 2D pilot to go into the uh, into the aircraft. Um, but before we do that, um, there are a couple of things that we can do. Firstly, we've got a little patch that we are going to add to the uh, to the fuselage. You can see a little pink spot there. Um, there's a essentially a uh, a step there or a sort of a, a stirrup um, in the fuselage itself and it's I'm sorting through my parts sheets here I've got several um, let's try and find it bear with me a second Right, I found a, I found a, this isn't the one we've used for this kit, but uh, because obviously we've still got all the fuselage. Um, but it's T33 is the part that we need. So we'll just extract that. Pings out. And that just needs to be adhered to the, uh, to the side of the fuselage, as I've showed you. So I'm just going to add a little amount of glue. Just there. And then pop it on. There we go. Lining it up, square it off. There we go. That's fine. So that's that. So here are our parts for what is the actually the header tank on the radiator on the top wing. Um, we've got a plastic part which is P thirty two, and coincidentally, we've got a Tyvek part which is T thirty two. So. Uh, that's confusing. So, um, what we need to do firstly is shape these. Or these they need a bit of a attention. These parts, the plastic part, just folds on itself um, down the score line. And obviously, we need to glue that together. So we'll do that, and the. Tyvek part just needs a little bit of shaping. Now these are both quite small parts, so it can get a little bit fiddly, but I'm sure you're up to it. There we go, so we'll just pop the plastic part down um, and let the glue dry. And then on the Tyvek part, we've got a, a little score and a tab on one end. And we just fold that over on itself, like so. And this top sort of cruciform here, that actually just bends down. And those little arms at the side, they just bend down like so. Try and get them um, to fold down as close to the sort of main structure as possible. And then this whole thing curves round in a sort of teardrop shape. And what I'm going to do is just use a little piece of, this is 2 mil carbon fibre, but uh, any anything with a, a small radius around about 2 mil will do the job. And then it basically folds on itself and glues onto the uh, the folded tab the other side um, and whilst it's doing that we want this top cruciform part to fold down and assist with forming that teardrop shape um, with those little arms sitting on the inside of the folded material <clears throat> to uh, to help the shape 
you see we've got our plastic part and we've got that little uh, forward facing vent on it and that should go through the little hole that's cut in the uh, in the Tyvek itself so you might need to encourage it there we go so I'm just going to add rather than taking it all apart again I'm just going to add a little glue to the front face of our plastic part just a tiny blob push that forward and then I'm going to add a little bit of glue so that those little tabs at the side of the Tyvek will glue to the inside of the rest of the Tyvek shape and I'm just going to deposit that glue onto where they'll be sitting by folding it round and let it open out again and then I'm going to add a little glue to the folded tab at the back of the structure like so and then a little onto the corresponding area that that's going to sit onto and then I'm just going to let all of that glue dry off and then we'll come back and uh, and assemble the part um, once that glue is dry. Right, let's see if this will all go together. So let's encourage the little pip shaped top of the part down onto the top of the plastic and then wrap that sidewall round. So you can I'm trying to describe what I'm doing because it's going to be very difficult to see because it's so small. But I think we have success. And obviously you've got a nice pip shape at the top of the, the structure. At the bottom it's a little bit squashed. So I can just encourage that out just using an implement, which happens to be my knife, but it doesn't have to be a knife, just something that will fit into the slot. And just encourage that into that teardrop shape. And there we have our little header tank ready to be installed. So let's get the aircraft back. I've actually taken the wheels off. Um, notice one of the wheels had, uh, had slightly uh, opened up. So I took it off and uh, just re-glued it. So that's why there's no wheels on there at the moment. There's a little um, slot that's cut into the sort of radiator part that's that's made of Tyvek. Um, there isn't a slot in the wing. So um, what uh, I suggest you do is just push your knife through, not, uh, not particularly far, but just through the material there to open it up. And then you should be able to just, using the little tab at the bottom of the header tank, just pop that through and hey presto it's on obviously we haven't glued it yet just a dry fit so let's just do that just going to put a little glue on the edge of that tie back too so once the glue is dry it will still maintain that teardrop shape so, on it goes, let that dry off, and uh, that should come, come in for some abuse, I'd imagine, if you're flying off a, uh, a particularly 
grassy field. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Right. Windscreen. Um, P for plastic. P23, I believe, is the part we're using here. And we're just on the, uh, the other side. We're just off. Oh, a sticker. Stickers out. Um, S twenty nine. So we we'll just pop that on the uh, on the reverse. And you've got these little tabs protruding. Um, these actually these actually will bend up and uh, just sit against the fuselage for uh, for attachment purposes. So let's just encourage our sticker. The backing paper. There we go. And then pop it onto our part. This is almost the difficult bit to do without getting my head right over it. So let's see if we can. There we go. And we just need to encourage this into a sort of bit of a bit of a curved shape, um, just by sort of bending that plastic. I've got the uh, the sticker material on the outside, so it's stretching um, rather than um, being wrinkled up. There we go. And then we'll bend these little tabs in. Like so. And then we can attach that to the fuselage. So you see I've got a little bit of curve tabs bent in I can get a little more curve into that go okay. bring on the main events and then uh, it's always good to have a bit of a dry fit just position that just forward of the uh, the, the cockpit Okay, so let's just add a little glue, glue to the tabs, uh, if you can get a tiny little bead on the edge as well, then do so. And then I'm going to position it, but once again remove it and then wait for the glue to dry to pop it back again and hopefully that's where it will stay. So, just making sure the glue is deposited onto the fuselage and then remove, we'll let that dry and then come back and put the windscreen into position. Whilst we're letting that dry, there are a couple of parts that we've provided um, by popular request uh, for an alternative way of making the windscreen and that's uh, these two pieces here these are uh, P23A and 23B and essentially all they are is the framework um, for the uh, for the windshield and it uh, provides you with the ability to create a clear windshield uh, by putting some clear material um, sandwich it between the two parts and uh, and then trim so you can have a very realistic clear windshield on your uh, on your model um, I put one together myself just using 
a, uh, a bit of, uh, a, of a bag that was included in the kit. Um, didn't do a particularly good job, but uh, it's uh, the, probably not the, the most ideal material to use. But um, there we go. That's it there. So I'll let you, I, I won't uh, demonstrate that. Um, because obviously if you're into your scratch building, that, that should be a pretty easy task for you to do. Um, but uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's what those two parts are there for, an alternative uh, windshield for you. Right, let's get this windshield on. Should be just a matter of placing it and pressing down. So yeah, I'm giving it a bit of a, a rake backwards as well. That encourages the tabs down onto the fuselage. go Just using the tip of the knife to push the tabs down There we go. Yep, I'm happy with the position of that. See it just there. Clear the struts. Oh, it seems to be lifting a bit. Good. Right. Okay. Next step, I'm actually going to pop the um, the pilot in. Now, this is the uh, the two D pilot um, that's supplied with the kit. There is uh, an alternative to uh, purchase a um, a paintable three dimensional pilot. It can go in there as well. This is the one that comes standard with the kit. So it works a little bit differently to uh, to our other kits in the fact that um, you fold it over like so, which is exactly the same as previous kits, um, which just really involves obviously gluing the two halves together. Um, but the top of this J at the back of the of the pilot should split out and splay like so and that then is the attachment point to the uh, structure in the fuselage so let's just encourage encourage that to stick together and fold our tabs down And then just add a little bit of glue to the top of those folded tabs. And then what we're going to do is just apply that glue to the underside of the fuselage former that sits just at the back of the uh, the cockpit so 
Now I've transferred some glue over. We'll once again let that dry off and then uh, we should be able to apply the pilot and it'll stay in place uh, without us having to, uh, to hold it for any length of time. Let's pop our pilot into his cockpit. There we go. Pilot in. You can't see him very well from there because he's very thin. But from the side, he's not so bad. There we go. On to the controls for the Albatross. Now we're almost done. Um, and as you can see, the uh, transmitter has made an appearance. Uh, before we start doing any of the controls, what we're going to do is make sure that all our electronics are functional. So, bring on the brushless receiver. So this little unit has got all the uh, all the connections for the uh, the servos. It's got our little uh, brushless motor connection too. Runs on uh, one cell. So. There we go. These are the two uh, batteries that I would uh, I would certainly recommend, and I've been using um, the uh, the smaller uh, E-Flight one hundred and fifty milliamp forty five C battery, and they also do a three hundred milliamp hour battery as well. Um, that's only twenty five C, but it gives a almost better performance than the um, uh, than the smaller one. Uh, quite obviously but um, yeah it gives gives plenty of power um, and you don't really notice the uh, the additional weight but, uh, but there we go I digress and we're checking the electronics and um, the first thing obviously is to bind your transmitter to your receiver which I have already done um, it seemed to be fairly straightforward so uh, that's uh, that's always good news um, and of course, we've already got one servo installed in the uh, the fuselage of the aircraft for the aileron control, um, but we do have a couple more. And what I want to do, apart from obviously check that they're all working, is uh, to make sure they're all centered as well, um, because we'll be installing these uh, without the arms on them. The arms are uh, in the packet here. I'll show you which ones to, uh, to use a little bit later. Um, and uh, these will be installed um, without the arms on first. It makes it easier uh, to actually then install the arms, um, the uh, control rods, uh, and uh, we'll pop the control rod ends, the Z bends, into the servo arms, and then pop the servo arms on the servos. So. Here are two servos, our um, receiver, we might as well test that the motor functions uh, well too. So there's our little brushless one cell motor and somewhere here I have the, uh, the instructions as well for, uh, for binding the, um, uh, the receiver. So um, that's all done, but obviously we've got a little map here as well. It tells us which uh, which ports are which. Um, so let's hook up our rudder servo. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way we do this or which servos we use. But it matters which way you plug this in, though. Um, there is a definite uh, way to plug this in. You'll notice down the sides of the plug itself um, you have got a couple of uh, protrusions and they should go into the slots um, on the uh, on the, the socket on the board so there we go so rudder and elevator and if we change the servos around when we come to install it doesn't matter which way they're plugged in they'll both be centered so uh, they'll both act in the same way should they be repurposed so there we go and we can plug our motor in as well uh, obviously we want our motor as we look at it 
running counterclockwise. And uh, if that runs clockwise, then all we do is turn the uh, turn the connector over, turn it around. Uh, so, okay, let's get the transmitter on. There we go. And get our board plugged in. There we go. So we're hooked up. Had our use of that now, so we can pop that to one side. And on our transmitter, we just want to make sure, firstly, that we're getting our rudder and elevator moving and then on the um on the trim settings just make sure they are all centered there we go so now all our, our servos will be centered and just a last check for the motor itself If you find that the motor doesn't activate, bring the trim down uh, four or five clicks on the throttle and uh, and then try again. Um, and that should activate the electronic speed controller. That all seems to be working absolutely fine. Great. OK. I'll get all this cleared away and uh, and then we will start the installation of the servos. Now, if you've seen the introduction to this video, um, you will have learned something uh, that I learned whilst I was building, which is it's a lot easier to install these servos if the top wing isn't on. Um, it's especially uh, a lot easier to secure the arm on the servo uh, using the little screws provided um, if, uh, if the top wing isn't on. Uh, so this stage, you may be doing a little earlier than I am here um, but nonetheless uh, we can still do it we just need uh, probably a good pair of tweezers um, and uh, some luck no it's not that bad so anyway I have my servo here and there are two holes left and right uh, in the uh, the fuselage internals themselves. So what we want to do is we want to pop our servos in there um, with the uh, the actual um, drive facing forward. Uh, then it makes our job easier for uh, uh, for popping in the um, uh, the, the servo arm, etc. So anyway. Uh, also, what I want to do is try and get rid of a lot of the excess of the lead, servo lead itself. So that's going to get tucked down into the, uh, the hole before the servo goes in. And you'll notice that in the, uh, the hole itself, both of them, at the front of the hole, there is a little notch there. Um, that allows for the cable to run back and forth. <clears throat> so, here goes nothing. Now, the hole is pretty tight. Um, so, uh, I've found that the friction fit um, works perfectly well to hold the servo in place. But if you want to get a little glue on the wings, on the, the servo itself, then by all means do, um, and that's uh, that's only going to help. So put our little so I'm going to manhandle it in. I'm just going to get put the uh, the cable there from the aileron server. I'll just move that out of the way, and then obviously because the top wing's on, it also makes it. Very difficult to do, uh, to demonstrate too. So, apologies for that. There we 
go. So I've got the servo in the hole there, and all I'm going to do is press it down firmly, and it should just tuck in there nicely, and I've just got a little bit, bit of lead left uh, to, uh, to plug into the receiver once we install that. So, same goes, same process for our other servo. This might be a little bit harder because I'm right-handed and I'm going to have to go in at a different angle. But uh, nonetheless, here we go. Go so in, just pop it down. I've got my little tail there. So servos are in. So the next step in the process is to create the control rods to the tail surfaces, and there's a diagram in your um, in your manual, your assembly guide, um, that should give you the dimensions of those control rods. Let's just pop this to one side. Um, I'll show you the original document. There we go. That's me scribbling it out whilst uh, I uh, created the first of the prototypes. So, I'll use that as my guide. In the kit, you should have these very lightweight um, one millimeter. They're not rods, they are actually tubes. And the little hole in the tube is very good at receiving and holding on to the piano wire of the um, actual wire control rods that's supplied in the kit. So we have our wire here. I have a measuring device. I haven't got a protractor, so I'm, uh, I'm going to have to estimate the, uh, the, the, the bend, as it were. Um, but uh, right, uh, this this here is the elevator control rod and I know that because the little Z bend at the end that uh, will hook onto the uh, control horn on the elevator is at a right angle to the little adjustable U-bend thingy at the end there. Um, so and that we want sort of this is the sort of angle we want this is this is pointing down at the moment you can see there i'm just rotating it downward so that's sitting like that that's how we want it sitting on the aircraft itself so we need from the point of the forwardmost point of the uh, the u we need to move 75 millimeters along here and let me just get my little pliers they're nice tiny teeny ones which do help so let's measure 75 along here and what you can do although i don't have one here at the moment is you obviously you could mark this with a an indelible marker or obviously with a quite a fine tip well, what I can do is I can just measure out 75 and hold it there. Get my pliers and then just pop it on so I know that that is 75 from there to there. Now, making sure that the U is sitting so it's pointing downwards. I then want to bend in. Oh, sorry, bend that way. So I've got around about 30 degrees of bend, or 150 that way. And then we're going to go along 
10 millimeters here. Okay, not particularly far. So just one centimeter. Okay, and we want to come back to the same direction the rod was running before we made that bend. So there we go. And we want that bend to be approximately perpendicular to the U. It sort of is, it could do with a little bit of a twist. That's better. And then we want to come along 30 millimeters along here, of which most will, will actually eventually go inside the carbon fiber tube. So. Just there. So that's where I want to cut it. I don't have a cutter on my small pliers, so I'm going to get my rather more hefty pliers. And of course, it doesn't have to be 30. Um, 30 is a sort of a minimum. Um, so I'm just going to nip it off. That's probably at 35. And then that excess piano wire can be put to one side. I don't think we need to use it. Oh, sorry. Of course, we need to use it. Silly me. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. So there we go. We've made our uh, our end piece. And now we need to make the other end of the control rod that will sit with and connect to the servo. So at one end, I'm going to use the clean end, the one I haven't snipped off. Um, so I want to create a little Z bend here. So I'm just with a nice narrow nose pliers i can uh, i can hopefully make a, a pretty good job of it obviously you want to make the z bend as small as possible so there we go it's not not the best but not the worst should do the job. Okay, and then from that Z bend, I want to come down 40 millimeters. There we go. So, 40 is, once again, this is, doesn't have to be super accurate. It's there or thereabouts. That's the elevator part. So that now I don't think we'll need. So I can pop that to one side and use that for another project. Um, now, put those away. We can grab our carbon fiber. And this has been pre-cut to 150 mil. So you don't need to do anything with that at all. Um, just use it. And then we want to pop these in either end into there into the uh, the carbon fiber tube but before we do that um to make our job a little easier i'm just going to use the sanding stick and just take the edge off the cut and the wire if it's splayed somewhat that can actually cause a split in the carbon fiber fiber rod and uh, we don't want that so just give the steel a bit of a sand, both sides. Okay. Now we're going to pop into there we go so there we go and it says 
that we have 10 millimeters that should be sticking out but um i'm going to leave that at the moment because that's nice and adjustable so i'm going to leave that until we've installed it and then i can make the final adjustments um to uh, to get our surfaces completely neutral so in goes the uh the aft end of the control rod and that should go in so that there is five millimeters um, sticking out there so we can actually glue this end so that's about four so let's bring it out a little bit more that is five millimeters so i'm actually going to use um let's just just looking at the diagram here, just making sure we've got everything in the right place. Um, so that's going to sit in the aircraft like so on the starboard side. Um, yeah, starboard side. Uh, that's on the yeah, the elevator control horn. This zips inside the fuselage just there, and obviously the control the carbon fiber control rod sits internally within the fuselage um, and then this will sit on and go into our uh, control horn that's going to go onto the servo um, so yep that's fine everything is oriented correctly i suppose i could i could turn that round so that that comes out the top of you can see there the, the z bend so the wire goes down into the control horn and then the Z bend goes through and uh, out the bottom. And obviously that keeps the control rod up high out of the way of any other obstructions there may be. So I'm going to secure this end and I'm going to use a little bit of CA to do so. The friction fits pretty good, but can always do with some more because it will move otherwise there we go and i'm actually just going to move that in and out so we get plenty of glue let's just let's get one of my bits of wire there just there's a little bit uh, of glue bunched up so i'm just going to spread it around a bit And just make sure everything is oriented as we had agreed on. And just check five millimeters. Once again, doesn't have to be absolutely accurate because we've got all our adjustment at this end. But, uh, but there we go. That's one control rod made. And that's how you do it. I'm going to crack on with the uh, the second one. All the uh, dimensions are in the assembly guide, so uh, I don't have to bore, bore you with, with uh, repeating the process. And we'll come back once it's built and we can start installing them. Here we go. Both our control rods completed, glued at the, uh, the aft end, unglued at the top end ready for adjustment once we've got the uh, got them installed so let's bring on the main event now we have already installed the pilot um, we do need access to this area to help the rods through um, it, hopefully he won't get in the way um, but uh, if he does it might be an idea to either take him out or not install him until after we've done the control rods sorry to say that now now that we've been through the video on how to install the pilot um but uh but there we go hopefully in the instructions um <laughs> it'll actually have the pilot going in at a later stage but uh anyway right glass is off so i can see what i'm doing and what do we got here we have got the elevator control rod as you can see obviously this is quite a bit longer than the uh 
than the rudder control rod, but the rudder is uh, further forward than the uh, the elevator. Right, so there should be an opening in the fuselage that the rod's going to go in. Mine is a little uh, bunged up. It obviously didn't line up particularly well. As you can see there, it didn't particularly line up well with the uh, the internal fuselage hole. So I'm just going to go and get my uh, uh, my scalpel, which I have moved, um, and uh, and open that up a little bit. Here we go. <clears throat> so, literally just going to pop the scalpel through, remove some of that foam on the internal. Get it all out of the way. So let's check the other side, just in case. Oh, it looks all right. Yeah, no, that looks that looks fine. We do need to. We will at a later stage. Right. So we're going to insert our control rod into the fuselage, and then. You can eyeball it up the fuselage, so I'm just looking directly into the fuselage there, so you can see, you can see the rod there going through, and I can manipulate it, make sure I can get it certainly all the way up to the, the cockpit. So I can then, with my tweezers, just grab it and move it through. There we go. So, <laughs> and I've inserted the wrong one in. <laughs> I've actually popped the rudder. So let's just extract that. Okay, switch over and try again. So I'm up to the cockpit. Through. There we go. Just going to attach. So you can see it. So I'm actually going to just bend because it's very bendy, the control horn over to one side and then bring it round and through so that the control is attached. There we go. It's all working nicely. And because this is coming through on the, uh, the port side, um, we're going to use the port side servo to control it, this one here. So, what we need now is the single-sided control horn, or servo horn, there we go, that one there. Set. And what we're going to do, and I'll show you this out of the uh, out of the aircraft, is that we're actually just going to pop control rod on like that. So through the Z bend, Z bend in, and then down, 
and then I'm going to pop the control horn onto the servo. Now, once again, this is a good friction fit, um, and you are supposed to secure it with uh, a little screw that was also included in the pack here. It's the, the you've got two, um, I suppose they're around about five mil, and you've got one that is it's about three mil. And it's the three mil one that you use to uh, self taps down into the uh, um, the the, uh, the the driving unit. And for the life of me, I can't remember what you call that. Um, yeah, but the it's splined, uh, obviously, so it grips, um, and that is actually secure enough. I've, in, in my prototype, I haven't actually. Um, I haven't um, screwed those in and they've been there and stayed there uh, forever more. But uh, if you want to screw them on, then you either need a very little screwdriver to get under the wing. Um, or, as I said before, this, is, this stage is done prior to putting the top wing on. Okay. So, I'm going to need... Either two pairs of tweezers, or let's just hold on to the rod this end. I'm going for the outer hole, which gives me the, the most amount of movement. This end. So. Now attempting to pop the horn onto the servo, which I have achieved, and then, and then lost it. Let's try again. Just a matter of getting it on. It's almost like popping a cap onto the, uh, the servo. Also, obviously, what I'm trying to do is get that arm so that it is neutral on the servo, i.e. Sort of perpendicular to it at right at right angles I should say and the splines will dictate exactly where it goes so it might not be absolutely square on there we go that's on it just needs pressing home there we go click it's in and uh, that's pretty good you can see there there we go so i'm going to repeat the process on the other side and then uh, we'll crack on actually before we do what i can check is how neutral my uh, elevator is and it, it is pretty neutral, so I'm actually not going to make any adjustment at this end. So what I can do now, very carefully, is add a little of the CA glue uh, between the carbon fibre and the wire, just to secure it in place. There we go. Just going to use a little bit of excess wire to move the glue around so it gets a good covering on the uh, on that transition. Good, right. I'll uh, crack on. Do the uh, other side. The do the rudder, and uh, we'll carry on from there. Oh, I'm uh, halfway through the uh, 
the installation of the rudder control rod. Well, it's in, I wouldn't say halfway through, um, probably a little more like 80% through. Um, but I wanted to just uh, let you know to keep hold of the screws in the uh, in the baggie here that comes with the servos um, especially the longer screws we need three of those to actually mount the um, the engine uh, the motor the brushless motor so uh, keep hold of those um, they'll come in handy right I'll just finish this off and uh, we'll come back uh, once it's done so I have the control rod in for the rudder the uh, servo is also uh, attached, the servo control horn. Um, and as you can see, the rudder itself is just slightly over um, to the starboard side. So I'm just going to make some adjustment um, by moving the position of the carbon fiber rod uh, on that uh, on the metal itself so I'm just going to increase it slightly it's looking better there we go that's almost perfect could it be a bit better come on we'll give it one last tweak this is this is where it all goes wrong there Good, so I can now secure that in place with a little CA glue. Well, not to get it all over the place. Just a wee dollop, there we go. So we have both servos installed. Loose spread over that joint. Go now. The next thing we're going to do is install the motor. And as I said before, we need three of those, I think they're sort of five mil, six mil screws. So there should be two in each servo bag. So you should have double the amount that you need. There's two. Uh, one more back here. Grab one from there. Now, motor. So the motor has three prongs to attach, and hopefully, so does your plywood motor mount. Um, the easiest way to do it is by using a little mini screwdriver, precision screwdriver, I think they call them. Um, and the easiest way to do it is to pop a screw into the hole and then put your precision screwdriver in place and then mount. Actually, before we do that, this is a good tip. Um, what you can do, and what makes life a lot easier, is to tap the holes before you mount. So that literally that's just thread a screw in to each of the holes in turn just to push a thread or just to cut a thread into each of the holes before mounting it just makes the whole process of doing them up a lot easier when you've got the bolt with the motor in the way And I always find it easier to mount the the bottom, the downward facing 
arm first. Um, just because I can, as I did before, I can pop the screw into the hole and then pop the screwdriver onto it and then mount. If it's already in there, I've got to get the screw through past the motor. And of course, the motor contains a lot of magnets. Um, so it tends to uh, halt the progress somewhat. Um, also, I want my wires to be uppermost so they can go over the uh, the plywood mount and onto the uh, speed controller stroke receiver. So we'll just pop the motor onto the mount, just getting that lower screw in place whilst we can, and then screwing it into place. There we go. Right, I've done that up a bit too tight to start off with. Just keep everything a, a bit loose. And once all the screws are in, we can just tighten everything up. we go so the motor itself should be sitting perpendicular to the plywood board which means that you've got some side thrust there and hopefully a little bit of down thrust too right okay so the next step um, and the final step for uh, certainly hooking up the controls is we need to attach the ailerons to our uh, little um, control rigging or control wires i should say so for this we will need our trusty needle threader stroke rigging tool Clear the decks. We need that, and we will also need. Oh, got a little bit of tea left. <laughs> we'll also need some of our little rigging collars. Mm. That's nice. And in fact, I'm just going to use that mug, pop the aircraft on top of, um, so that I don't squash my little detailed bit up there. Now, on our uh, ailerons, a better way I can position this so that you can see. There we go. Well, that's, that's not too bad. The poor old pilot's getting it. But <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll be all right. So we have our control wires here. And if you remember back to when they were initially rigged, your, uh, your control wire that comes out of the forward hole um, should go to the uh, forward uh, attachment point on the aileron control horn and the rearmost uh, hole should go to the rear and this is exactly the same on both sides so what we can do um, I marked mine with a uh, some black ink from a permanent marker 
so I can see which one's which. And the black is the one that mark that's marked black is the the um, coming out of the forward hole. So I know that each uh, with, with the black mark on will be going to the forward hole on both of my ailerons. The first thing we need to do though is to split the uh, the aileron wire now so we can thread it so it should be easy to split it in the middle there we go one side and then the other fantastic right now each of those um, aileron control horn ends has a little hole through it and that hole should be able to take your rigging tool or accommodate your rigging tool I should say so what we need to do first off is let's see let's mount those forward holes first so that's the one with the black mark on Go. So I need to get my collar onto there. So I'm going through the collar. <laughs> well, I thought I was. Let's try that again. Through the collar. Grab the rigging wire. Draw that through. So my collar's on there, and to prevent the collar falling off, I'm just going to turn the aircraft over so that the collar falls down to the bottom of the wire. And then I need to thread my wire through the right, yep, the forward hole on the uh, aileron control horn. There we go. And then pop my wire through there that's got the collar on, draw it through back through the hole. Okay. And then that end needs to go back through the collar. So I just need to pick the collar up. my rigging tool through and draw that wire back through the collar and there we have it I'm going to repeat that process for the rear wire. Another little rigging collar. Pop that onto the rigging tool. Draw the wire through the collar. Flip the aircraft over to prevent it falling off. The aircraft up so we can see what we're doing. Let the collar fall. Then rigging tool. Through the hole. Oh, there we go. I have a broken rigging tool. It's come to the end of days. Let's see. It's finally given up.
they don't last forever and split right at the end. So I need to grab another one. I just happen to have one here. A bit of a sorry state, but still intact. Needs a little bit of uh, TLC. Right. Just pop that through. Go. Pull that back through. Sometimes if it's uh, proving a little difficult to get it through the hole, if you just hold it with a pair of pliers and add a little bit of pressure, it usually does the trick. There we go. Then we need to thread our collar. So reading that back through into the reading tool. And then draw it through the collar. Okay. Ooh, I cut the uh, drawers quite close on this side. <laughs> well, the collar's through, but I seem to just have a little bit of entanglement on the, yeah, there we go, on the threader. So I'm just going to pull the cord up so that the collar doesn't use gravity to, uh, to descend. So, but I'm not going to secure those just yet because we're going to do the other side in exactly the same way. Um, and then we can tighten everything up and crimp. Let me just do the other side and uh, we'll be back in the game. So both sides are rigged up now. It's just a matter of tightening everything up. And, uh, and then crimping. What we want, though, with our ailerons is um, that they are as neutral as possible. We know for a fact, well, I'll secure our uh, undercarriage a little bit later, once we've stopped faffing around and putting a, a lot of stress on it. Um, yeah. What we have done earlier on in the build, obviously, is our, we know that our... Um, uh, our servo, our aileron servo sitting internally is neutral because we've uh, hooked it up to the receiver and switched it on and made sure everything was uh, was where it should be. So if we can actually ensure that our ailerons are neutral, then uh, we'll be doing some good. We won't have to do an enormous amount of trimming, hopefully. So... Um, this is just a matter of tensioning each of these in turn. Now, obviously, you don't want to over tension things, and it'll be quite obvious if you do, is the uh, little control horn will start distorting. Um, we look good on that side actually. And everything seems to be pretty neutral. So I'm going to call that and crimp. So at this point, I want to be as careful as possible not to 
shift anything around. Just going to make a few little adjustments here to get the collars as close as possible. Go. And then print one. Print two. Do the same on the other side. Just get everything mentioned nicely. Go and then crimp. Crimp. There we go. So ailerons now hooked up, rudder and elevator as well we can now start thinking about popping our receiver in place all i need to do is find where it is here we go no <laughs> it's gone and dis ah there we go it's snuck underneath there we go brilliant so we're going to secure this with Again. I've got half a uh, bit of servo tape there, so I've basically just sliced that in half, um, and we're just going to use that, I'm going to pop that on the base there, in fact I could trim it down a little bit more, so having sticky bits coming out the sides. I'm just going to peel off, move that out of the way, don't want me staring into a dirty old mug. Um, so, peel it off, stick it on, go, press it home, and I'm actually going to pop all of the wires into place um, before I uh, finally mount it so we can find a, a decent location for it. Right, I need the map. Where is the map? Here's the map. So this is going to be around that way. So my elevator is here, my elevator socket is there, so I do find tweezers very handy and <laughs> I've got wires all over the place. There we go, so let's put the Elevator into its socket. The rudder's on the opposite side. Let's do that. Right. 
squeeze in. These balls are so tiny that uh, I just feel they're going to fall apart, but they are pretty sturdy. And then the aileron, which is um, this plug here, my aileron socket, correctly oriented. And pop that in. There we go. And then we can find an appropriate piece of real estate for this to sit. Now, I don't want it too far away from the motor because the motor lead is quite short and it doesn't weigh a great deal so I'm not too worried about centre of gravity with regards to it. I suppose I've also got to keep in mind the arc of the, the servo arms as well. So I think if we bring it around about around about there so that the um, the the uh, motor socket is around about where the bulkhead sits so let's just remove our sticky tape protector and then see if we can't put it where we want it go give it a good press down I'm holding it from underneath as well so I don't collapse the undercarriage excellent and then we can try and tidy up some of this cabling let's push it down so it doesn't get in the way of anything the aileron Able to go out, go out back. There we go. And we can pop our motor connector into place. Excellent. Obviously, the cable can be configured to get out of the way we've got uh, if you uh, if you're using one of these batteries it actually sits quite neatly just sort of just there if you uh, catch my drift so uh, obviously position the cable to uh, to be able to accommodate that good right okay well I suppose the one thing we can do now is hook it all up and see uh, see whether it's all working as it should let's just pop our radio on I had the throttle up slightly right that seems to be running in a clockwise direction i want it in anti-clockwise direction so let's just quickly unplug that in fact i'll depower everything unplug and just flip it over Pop it back in the socket. There we go. Let's plug back in. There we go. There's the full tune. So we have elevator. We have rudder. Move that slightly. 
Oh, and we have some rather snazzy ailerons too. There we go. Look, they are sitting beautifully neutral, which which warms my heart. <laughs> Everything is working as we hoped it would. How fabulous. Great stuff. Right. Okay. Let's turn everything off. And now, what we need to do is tidy things up a bit. We've got a lot of string hanging around, and so we need to uh, to think about trimming all of that, and we've got some rigging to tension because the wings themselves are still loose. So we need to uh, tie off the uh, the wing rigging. So to do that, um, firstly we just want to make sure that all our rigging is tensioned up so I'm just going through and pulling it all through again just to make sure and then i'm actually going to tie this final piece off um, just by looping it or basically putting in a couple of half hitches um, on one of the other lines that it comes very close to. So, and this is all done using tweezers. So that was one half hitch. Let's put the other half hitch in. So if I could grip this, there we go. <laughs> Gravity not on my side. Gotcha. There we go. So that has now got decent tension and is tied off. And what I'm then going to do is using a little bit of CA glue, just to make sure it all holds firm. My CA is not coming out. So these little uh, bits of leftover piano wire have a number of different uses. So, just a little blob in there to hold it firm. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, but you don't have to watch. So, we've now got uh, both sides uh, tensioned. The other thing that we need to do is uh, fix the undercarriage. Um, because at the moment it's got the ability to sort of slide back and forth and that really just requires us to add some glue to these uh, little uh, two little lugs there plus you can also add it to the um, uh, central cross as well so just add a little glue there um, just kind of use my glue spreading tool 
aka a bit of control rod. Just move that around and that should be done. Now the other process of course is that we need to trim all of this uh, excess and the best way to do that, the easiest way to do that is rather than using the knife that you've been using to carve and cut up various bits is to get an absolutely fresh blade and then set about uh, trimming all of the wires with that fresh blade and indeed i mean i what i tend to do is uh is just reserve the one blade for this particular task so i'm going to start with let's get this the dirty mug back um just pop the aircraft down there um i'm going to start uh on the ailerons that we've just set up and using the tweezers i'm going to hold the um, the excess and then cut through i always cut away I, I know you can't see this let's see if we can improve that so see so, there we go so i'll hold the excess In the with the tweezers put a little tension on it and always cut away from the secured line so i don't cut through that as well there we go with a fresh blade it goes straight through with a blade that's not fresh you can be there for hours sawing through so get a fresh blade is the suggestion here so there we go do the other side Go one. Two. So easy. So easy once you've uh, got that fresh blade. The uh, the rest of it, the the rigging tension and the um uh the, the undercarriage. I'm going to actually leave until that uh, CA glue dries. Uh, in the meantime, our final stage is actually the prop and prop adapter. So let me just go and get the bits for that and uh, we shall carry on. So, if you've bought the kit with the flight pack, um then you will have your gws 5030 prop and the little rubber prop adapter and in the kit regardless of how you purchased it uh, is a vac formed um spinner so we'll uh, need to extract that sand it down and assemble it and uh, it'll be ready to go oh we can paint it as well on this particular model and um, the spinner was black that makes it nice and easy we don't have to mix any colors try and match or anything like that so we'll uh, we'll paint that up too okay the prop um we have some stickers some prop stickers so excuse me i'm using whatever i've got to hand these uh, these stickers haven't been used apart from uh, the couple down there um but s28 are the prop stickers that you need a little tip here actually uh something that i've i used to do stop doing and now i'm doing again um is each of these props has 
uh, some some raised detail, some numbers and letters telling you what it is. Um, if we're putting a sticker over there, I like that to be nice and smooth. So we can actually take that uh, that lettering off just by carefully sanding it. Now it does slightly rough up the prop itself, um, so it does look a little unsightly. But of course, we're putting prop stickers over, so it don't matter. So you can just just gradually sanding it off, and it should be fairly apparent when it's gone. Uh, there's a little number one at the back there as well, which I'll, I'll take off. I don't want to take off too much material, but just so that you get a nice smooth prop sticker without these raised details trying to punch through. Here we go. So, all the dust. And then we have our prop stickers. So we can remove these from the backing paper. Um, obviously, they're, they're, be careful when you get to the bottom of the V. That's a good area for the sticker to split if it's going to split any. So just work your way around and then peel up and pop off. So my my little trick to getting these on nice and smoothly and it works every time is to add a little um, fluid to the prop and the sticker and that essentially means me licking it. I have a prop in my mouth at the moment. Mm. Here we go, and same with the sticker. Now you could use some water with some uh, washing up liquid, but I find this works just as well, and it's more accessible. Just means you can slide things around a bit. Okay. There we go. And of course, you've got to let it dry off a bit. Before, uh, before using it, otherwise it's likely to just fly off, but uh, that adhesive will start doing its job after, uh, after a relatively short while, especially if you can leave it near a gentle heat source. So, on to the next one. Just as well you can't see me doing this is not not a pleasant thing to have to look at a grown bearded man licking stickers. Now I just position one side on there as best possible, covering the uh, the prop below, and then see, a little more fluid on that side. And then what I'm trying to do is just negate any of the white of the underside of the sticker showing through. On the leading edge there where they come together we'll just let that dry off and then they should be easy to, uh, to push in. 
So that's our prop done. The actual prop adapter itself just squeezes through the middle there. So, and we can put that side to dry off, and we can turn our attention to the vac formed spinner. Let's just get rid of the model for now. Right, there is a fairly simple way of removing this. From the backing and that is we're just going to take take those edges off do a rough cut around each of these parts and separate them too so i'm just going to carefully Cut around using scissors. These uh, these sort of side walls that stick out the side here, they they aren't coming with the part. You won't need those, so you don't need to pay too much attention to them. It's these the curves around the edge. That's what uh, we want to get. That's what we want to get good. So, go. That's one out. Let's get the other. So, this basically, you have an inner and an outer part of the spinner. And uh, as you can see, this part that I've got here, you've got a sort of a, a central bobbly bit there that is, in fact, exactly the same shape as the top of the prop adapter there. So that literally positions itself in there and that centers everything, hopefully. And uh, so that the spinner isn't wobbling out front and looks the absolute business when the aircraft is uh, under full power. Right, so the next step is to just ensure these parts around the edge are nice and evenly curved. And the spinner has a nice good, good shape to it. You literally just carry on sanding until you're happy with those edges. Obviously, try not to sand the surface of the uh, of the spinner because you'll leave scratches in it and when you get the paint on you'll see those scratches unless you use an extremely fine grit sandpaper of course so let me crack on with this and once i've got both parts sanded we'll go on to the next step so we've got our edges sanded on the curved parts of our spinner and now what we need to do is remove these little side protrusions using the junction between the spinner surface and the protrusions as a guide so literally just run the knife and i try and i don't usually go through on the first sweep but i create a score Just run that knife so just there we go. 
go. Side. Follow that junction through. go nearly there there we go and then we can on this inner part here obviously it doesn't matter if we uh, scratch the surface in fact probably it's a good idea to scratch the surface because we'll be gluing it to the inside of the uh, external spinner skin and that roughing up is going to uh, is going to help so is sort of well it's going to help adhere the uh, surfaces together so now the, obviously this is the cutout where the prop sits up into some some trimming as required So that should position nicely there. It's looking fine. Now we'll take the uh, side panels off the external spinner, and I'm obviously going to be a little more careful with how I do this because this is the surface that will be seen. I'm going to have a bit of patience to do this, but it doesn't take that long. It's worth taking your time over. be very careful how I sand this. <clears throat> so 
<coughs> those two parts should sit together like so so you can literally bring them together match them up and they should form quite a solid um, spinner certainly no mine have uh, survived a few nose ins so let's just apply some glue i'm just using the foam to foam on the inner just a thin layer of a good coating Then together they go. Best one yet, I reckon. So we'll set that aside to dry. Have a bit of a tidy up, go and get some black paint and uh, get ready to absolutely and utterly complete this build. Here we go. See that there. <laughs> All that. Right. I have my paint. Um, it's actually an airbrush paint, but I'm going to uh, apply it with a brush. I've got an old cowl here that uh, is obviously not being used. Maybe it didn't, oh, I dented it, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to use that as my little paint pot. And I've got a nice little paintbrush and a cap full of water. Um, this is acrylic, so I'm just going to... Uh, Pop some of that on. Okay, let's just squeeze out a measured amount of paint. There we go. That's why I love these little bottles. They work so well. Right. Now, let's get our fingers back. This is probably going to take a couple of coats. Make sure I've got some around the back edge there as well. I haven't got any of the white plastic showing through. Now, if I was a proper modeler, I'd be, I'd be supporting this from the inside with some sort of device, so I didn't get my fingers in the way. But uh, long gone are those days. So just gonna have to get the fingers dirty. This paint shouldn't take too long to uh, to dry out, so a second coat can be done within a, a few minutes. Let's just pop that down there and clean the brush at least. There we go. And whilst we're waiting for that to dry. We can just pop the uh, the prop on. Let's just make sure our sticker is stuck. Especially that leading edge where it's going to be cutting through the breeze. Okay. Bring the 
later on and it is literally a push fit so this should go all the way on push right on to the uh, the motor there we go it's as easy as that so we'll let that dry off get another coat on it and then pop it on there hatch on and i think we're pretty much done actually just thought whilst we're allowing this to dry we're waiting for it to dry we're not allowing it it's doing it of its own volition put that over there um, we can continue to tidy up our threads so get my fresh blade out again I haven't got any wet paint on me that I can transfer and we can start the process in our dirty mug again what have we got to trim oh yes we've got the uh, the wings haven't we um and the undercarriage let's do the undercarriage first tweezers and cut away from the tension thread. One. Two. Marvelous. Let's flip up. up on the nose and once again tension the thread slice excellent and round for the next one Tension slice fabulous. And put the fresh blade away again. Okay, let's see how our Spinner is doing. Okay, still a little bit damp here. So we'll just wait for that to dry. Watch the paint dry and uh, put our final coat on. Okay, I think we're uh, about ready to give it a second coat. So we shall do that. And I've just remembered something that we have to do um, is the in the hatch itself, um, we have created a little uh, sort of battery cradle. Um, certainly for the um, for the smaller of the two batteries that I've recommended. Um, so we can actually pop that in as well. Oh, this paint is so good, so dense. The other thing you could do um, once your paint is on um, is you could apply a little acrylic varnish or something similar um, that would uh, add some protection to it, especially if it's uh, if it's being used on rough terrain or being brought in for heavy landings. 
But for now, that's going to do for me. Okay, on to the hatch battery system. So, uh, we'll strap positioning art. Um, it's actually P33. I've got a brand new sheet here, which I'm afraid I'm going to wreck by just removing P33 from it. But, uh, it's all for you guys so you can see how it's put together and that's what's important so let's just put that to one side and then this is literally just a very simple box that goes together with a little a little puzzle piece on one end that should Come together like so. And if you pop a little bit of glue on that puzzle piece side, like so. And this actually sits. Let me look at the the central plywood part there you've got uh, a little excess of, of plywood just here there's no hole there and that's where your little strap can sit so I'm actually going to just pop it there as it stands and then remove and then we'll bring it back together once the glue is dried. So a little puzzle piece is holding. And that will allow you to position batteries like this with the slim long body um, into the hatch uh, to get it out of the way of all the electronics. Um, as I said, alternatively, using the larger battery, it's, uh, it's quite happy to just sit uh, between the, uh, the motor and the electronics. Like so. And it's literally can be held there by the uh, by the hatch itself, just sitting on top of it. So, Let's just pop that into position now. Now the glue has had time to set. Just going to use the tweezers to ensure that there's a really good adhesion between the two surfaces. And then if I just demonstrate that is literally how the battery can be held in the compartment like so really convenient way okay well let's put our hatch on now we've got that in place And we're so nearly there. I'm getting excited, getting excited to uh, to actually fly this one. Very nearly dry. <laughs> well, here we go. The final step, I think. Can it really be? I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the uh, centre there. Just so that it holds firm. And then pop 
this. Onto our prop. And there we have it. Our finished, finalized albatross D5, completely built and ready for test flying. Here we go, the finished article. I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to flying that, as I hope you are yours as well. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope it has been uh, extraordinarily useful for you. We will be doing a lot more of these for a lot more of our kits in the future.